this computer. We can start. Greetings and peace, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, we have the pleasure of doing the 99 names of Allah, which is uh, the equivalent of finding the divine qualities within our own selves and what God, Allah, or the grand architect of the universe wants us to see. We also have uh, the pleasure of Brother Bashir Mark, who's joining us, who comes from Sufism. And I will give the Masonic interpretation or the esoteric interpretation of, of how we can apply these names to our lives. Just like how the Mason is searching for the name of the grand architect, we must find those answers within our own heart. So without further ado, let's begin. All right, so the first name of uh, 99 names of Allah is Allah, the one yes. true existing God, one and only deity, the one who is worshiped and the one who deserves to be worshiped by the whole of his creation. Uh, just let everyone know, uh, all these definitions have come from Al-Ghazali, um, talking about the 99 names of Allah. So these are his uh, definitions of the 99 names of Allah, and that's what we're using. Yes, definitely. Imam Ghazali was a truly, a highly adept spiritual master from the Sufi path. Just like how we have Rumi, and you have these different uh, Shams Tabrizi, all of these great teachers who have walked the earth. So with Allah being the one true existing God, the one and only deity, this basically tells us in Sufism that Allah is the only reality. So myself, Brother Bashir, the trees, the stars, the galaxies, the moon, the sun, all other human beings, all other sentient beings, everything is connected to that one source. Nothing is separate from that one source and that light that comes from that one source. And that's what we say in one of the 99 names of Allah, which we will cover later, is Allah Had, which is complementary to Allah being the one true existing God. And that means everything is one. And that's what we have in our Masonic Brotherhood is when on the altar, you will have reverence for all of the holy books, all of volumes of sacred laws, because there's truth found in every group of life. And that's what Manly Palmer Hall teaches us is that the true Mason bows before every altar and there's light to be found everywhere. Because if we're one united body of the grand architect, then there's a little bit of truth fragmented into each body. And we must be able to be willing to learn and not be clouded by any bigotry or prejudices or what society has taught us to perceive a certain group of people in a certain way. We must be able to give our love and credence to everybody. And that's what it means, that one true existing God, that we are all one part of that source and nothing is separate. And we must find that within our own heart. And we also could also say that we are created in to become God-like, uh, just yes. like God created Adam and Eve to be in the image and likeness of him. Um, <clears throat> and that is also, uh, he is also the power of, uh, source of the knowledge power agency and the rest so that's the like all of the remaining names that refers to uh, Allah yes. uh, the second name is going to be Al-Rahman and Rahim the mm -hmm. infinitely good the merciful Al-Rahman means showing mercy to those who are negligent dissuading them from path from the existence of God and Al-Rahim means not turning away from any needy persons without meeting needs to existence to his ability yeah, that's exactly right. And you know, the most beautiful thing about Bismillah Rahman Rahim is that that's basically the square in the compass, 787. And uh, if you have the uh, Masonic square and compass and a lot of the Sufi lodges back in the day, they had the numbers 787 written outside of it. And that means the alchemical transformation of man into divine qualities. And what that means is like, you have uh, the word Rahman, that's basically a feminine name. And Allah says in the Koli Quran that besides uh, Allah, you can call me Rahman, which is the divine feminine. And so for a Muslim, he cannot be whole unless he has his mate with him. Or for a female Muslim, she cannot be whole unless she has her fellow mate with him, with her. So what that is teaching us is that the aspect of the masculine and feminine qualities within you, you must find the balance within yourself. How a lot of these occult traditions will show that the perfect being is the one that doesn't identify with any gender or is androgynous. So this basically is showing you the genderless and the androgynous quality of the all merciful God, which encompasses everything. 
and how we must be able to love ourselves, heal ourselves, forgive ourselves before we could do that for anybody else. And that is ultimately finding that balance between the feminine and the masculine, in addition to Bismillah rahman rahim being the 787 the square in the compass. Well, we also could add in for our Rahim, it also means that we should not be turning away from any needy persons, just like we should not be turning away from a brother who is in need. Uh, yeah. Charity, that's right. also another part of our of our Freemasonry. Absolutely, absolutely. Al Malik, the king, his own essence and attributes has no need of existing things, while every existing thing needs him. Yes, that's right. And a lot of people, there was a brother who had asked me the other day, is that why does, if our fate is already written, and if our destiny is already pre-written, then why do we have, you know, free will? And then why do we need to pray to Allah? And I said, and the reason is that the prayer is by praying to Allah, you're helping yourself. Allah, the grand architect, the most high, however you perceive him, he does not require our prayers because he is self-existing and self-knowing. And uh, the prayers, since we are the physical manifestations of that divinity and our temples are manifested here to get back to that higher state from which we've fallen from, we, with those prayers, we're actually helping ourselves. So when you get on the carpet and the carpet is um, basically the Islamic prayer rug is in the shape of an oblong square, like a Masonic Lodge, like Noah's Ark, anything that has to do with holy. And you basically, when you pray, that's where the West gets the concept of the magic carpet. Your soul is ascending higher to the other realms where you can make that connection with the most high. Or the, they have these different concepts about, you know, the great white brotherhood or different, you know, benevolent things that are out there. So you have to help yourself. They, the divine will never interfere in your free will. But when you choose to accept the divine and request the divine to help you, then ultimately you are helping yourself. So that's what, what you know, Al-Malik is. You have to find that quality within yourself. Next name is al Qudus, the holy, the one who is free from every attribute which a sense might perceive or imagination may conceive or to which imagination may intersect instinctively turn or by which the conscience may be moved or by which thinking demands. Yes. So al Qudus is basically in Freemasonry when they tell you to circumscribe your desires and live within due bounds, that you should not be a slave to anything. And to know that I control my body, I control my actions, I control my ego. Those things do not control who I am. I am that I am. So the thing is that us being manifestations of that physical divinity here on this earth, it's telling us that, you know, with your free will and the concept of good men becoming better, you have to be the one that does not get tied down by norms and societal expectations or anything which tells you to degrade anybody or look down upon anybody, whether they look or believe differently than you. You have the capability to help somebody help them. If you're suffering from anything, internally such as any emotional spiritual mental problems any addictions then you take the responsibility to help yourself because that's one of the qualities of the sufi as well and the mason is that in the aspect of self-improvement plus to circumscribe your desires the sufi is trying to uh, annihilate himself from this world where you have the three stages of fana you have fana e sheikh fana e rasul and fana e allah so like the three stages of masonry, the Sufi is also trying to annihilate himself. And you will see a lot of these Sufis if you go to uh, some of these uh, spiritually adept countries. And some of them are very rich people. They, they're well set, they're educated, they have everything. But he'll be sitting on the floor with like um, the clothes that he's been wearing for the same week. And that means is he's trying to let go of himself from this world. So that's what you know that name is teaching us is to be of this world, uh, but you know, not of it. Al Hal, uh, I think we just missed a couple of them. Hold on. Yeah. Al Salam, the flawless, the one yes. whose essence is free from defect, whose attributes escape imperfection, and whose actions are untarnished by evil. And given that he is like that, there is nothing flawless in existence which is not attributed to him and originates from him. Yes, of course. So Al-Salam, my brother, is basically peace. 
So when you have assalamu alaikum, which means peace be upon you, or if you have Christ in the Bible, every time he went to go greet anybody, he would say peace unto you or peace be upon you. And that's assalamu alaikum with the aspect of the salam. Salam means to find peace within yourself. And ultimately, my brother, is when we look at the way we perceive reality, where you say, I myself am heaven and hell, that means depending on how you are internally, that's the reality you're going to project out into your external world. So if I'm, if I'm at peace within myself, my ego, my heart, my spirit, then I will create a good reality. I will attract people to me. They will say hello to me. Hey, how you doing? How's everything? But if I'm in a state where I'm at war with myself, then I will only attract the bad to my life. So al Salam is telling you within your physical temple, find that peace of God within your life. But you even have many zikrs in the Sufi aspect where you recite you know, a lot of these names to invoke those different qualities of God within you. So you can recite Ya Salam a thousand times before you go to sleep. And that will invoke that peace within you. Such as in Buddhism, they have Om Mani Padme Hum. You recite it a thousand times before going to sleep. So Al Salam is the same, the aspect of finding peace within yourself. And once you find peace within yourself, you create a peaceful reality outside of yourself. Al Mumin, the faithful, the one home security and safety are ascribed because he conveys the means to attain them and blocks the path of dangers. Yeah, so Al Mumin being the faithful means in how we have in the brotherhood is how brothers are faithful to each other. He would protect his brother from anything that might harm him or, you know, make sure that he educates him on anything that might harm him to make sure that he's able to protect himself. And by helping his brother, he's ultimately helping himself. Again, we're all connected to that same source, going to the name of Allah, that Allah is the only reality. And all of these different things that we're involved in, the brotherhoods, the, the different mystic paths, ultimately, all these different paths are taking us all to the one mountaintop. And we can't do it by ourselves. Christ needed his uh, companions. He had uh, Moses. He had his companions. Prophet Muhammad, he had his companions. Peace be upon them all. So we need our brotherhoods and we need each other to get to the destination we need to get to. We can't let our egos tell us that we don't need anybody. We do need each other. And that aspect of safety and security, we do that for each other. And we do that for ourselves, is that what can I do to make myself secure, my home secure, my family secure? And that's exactly what it is, to be faithful, to be faithful to your wife, faithful to your children, your family, your brotherhood, and not, you know, not anything get in the way where it might make you look lesser upon somebody that somebody's lesser than you No, everybody's on the level and by being the faithful we have to address that and interpret that quality of the divine al muhaimin the guardian one who tends to his creatures with regard to their actions their sustenance and the time of their death yes so you know how in the masonic brotherhood we have the concept of the memento mori and memento mori tells us that your life can come to an end at any moment. Same thing in the Holy Quran. It tells us that every soul shall taste death. That's something that you cannot escape from, no matter what zip code you live in, what neighborhood, house, car, college degrees, job, you name it. Whatever you, a man desires, you have it, but ultimately everyone will follow that same ultimate inevitable destination. So by being the guardian, you know that through the actions, and the time of death, that there is a price to pay for everything. A lot of us, uh, you know, my brother, we think that we get away with everything. And it comes to that story of the Sufi Sheikh. And the Sufi Sheikh tells three of his disciples, take this chicken and go kill it somewhere in a place where no one will see it. And uh, one of them took it into the forest, he killed it. Other took it to the back of his house, he killed it. Third one said, Sheikh, I took it everywhere, but God was watching me wherever I went. And the Sheikh said, you are the one that passed the test. Because by being the guardian, you are also not the guardian of yourself and your family, but your afterlife as well. Because what you do in this life will determine how you move up into the next realm. So we must realize that any day could be your last day. Don't hurt anybody. Don't break anybody's heart. If you need to say sorry to anybody, pick up the phone and call them and tell them. It's not going to make you a lesser person, even if they choose not to respond. But you always be the better person because your record will indicate that as such when it comes time for you to be held accountable. 
Al Aziz, the eminent, one who is so significant that few exist like him, yet he is also one for whom there is intense need as well as to whom access provi- uh, proves difficult. Yes. So Al Aziz is uh, teaching us to find that quality within ourselves, such as you have um, the adept initiates. So the one whom access proves difficult, and there's few of us that exist. So that basically symbolizes our brotherhoods. And you know what God is teaching us is that not too many people will ultimately, you know, get God, if you know what I'm saying. Like how it says in Mark 4.11, where Jesus said that there will be those of you that will be taught in parables like you, you think you will get it, but you won't. And then there will be the ones who will get the inner mysteries who truly will understand what the whole God thing is about. Same with uh, Moses. With He was an initiate of the Egyptian mystery schools. He had his inner circle that truly understood God. And then there were the outside ones who took it in their own literal way. Same thing in Islam with the prophet Muhammad. You had the people of the bench, the Sufis, who were instructed in esoteric Islam. And the outside of it were taught like, you know, the literal interpretation. So Al-Aziz being imminent tells you that you must be an imminent man or woman of God. And to find that inner knowledge within your heart and not let any divisiveness get under your skin, ultimately realizing that each path is teaching you the truth in their own unique and most beautiful way. And by, you know, access being proven difficult, it's like you have the concept of these different initiatic systems, such as Sufism, Gnosticism, Freemasonry, you know, whatever is out there. It's majority of the human population is not into it. It's very few. It's like you have seven, almost eight billion people in the world. And out of eight billion, only five to six million are Freemasons. So those are the eminent ones, the ones who get it, the ones who are on the adept path, the ones who know what is God, what is reality, what is my purpose, what is the fight between good and evil, what's my role in it. So by reaching out to Al-Aziz, we interpret and become Al-Aziz ourselves with those qualities. Al-Jabbar, the compeller, one who implements his will by way of compulsion in every single thing. He is the one whose grasp nothing escapes. Yes. So this is equivalent to um, the all-seeing eye that we see on the back of the dollar bill, where a lot of these different people who have walked the path of enlightenment say that I have went to the mountaintop. And the mountaintop is basically the capstone on the back of the pyramid. Once you get to that light on the top, the eye of providence, that's the eye of the grand architect or uh, the eye of Allah that tells you that, you know what, everything, nothing will escape the grasp. Everything, you will be held accountable. And always watch yourself with your thoughts, actions, speech, judgment. Everything will be right there in front of you. And you must be able to interpret that quality within yourself by honing your senses, having like eagle vision, seeing something a mile before it even comes your way. You know what's coming for you and you're able to better prepare yourself. So you must be the one that is the compeller in your community, for your family, for your loved ones, and for yourself and for your brotherhood in all manners and love for all humanity. al Muktakabir, the proud, one who regards everything is unworthy of consideration in relation to himself, who sees greatness and majesty only in regard to himself and looks upon others as a king looks upon his servants. Now, this is where you have the concept of, uh, you know, the aspect of, you know, the black and white tiles of Freemasonry. And you must realize that a lot of these 99 names, there's a concept of where many people have, who is God and the devil? Uh, and what's the game that's being played with humanity, with, uh, uh, with us being stuck in the middle with the chess pieces and the black and white tile system and the white lodge, black lodge type of system. So you have a lot of these names that also shows the wrath of God. So we are basically al Mutakabir, the proud, is basically telling us to avoid that quality. So Allah, the grand architect, will teach you all of these qualities of being benevolent and being merciful. But there are some names that are telling you, because obviously nothing exists without balance. One cannot exist without the other. So al Mutakabir, the proud is telling you, is that you have to basically avoid being proud. Pride is your downfall. That was Iblis's downfall when he refused to bow before Adam, even though he had worshipped, you know, Allah for a thousand years before that. 
teaching the angels the Quran and all of the good stuff and the knowledge that was out there. So this name is telling you to be careful of being proud. So you have to be careful of that as we find that balance with the other names that we come across. Next one is Al Khalik Al Bari and Al Masor, a creator, producer, and a fashioner. Fashioner, one who created all that is in existence and originated it, who made everything correct and its place according to the to the dictates of his wisdom, who shaped everything by virtue of his praise and wisdom. Yes, yes, that's correct. So basically, this my brother is telling us is that we are the creators of our own reality. And it goes back to what we were discussing before, is that the, uh, the aspect of finding heaven and hell, what's heaven and hell, what's God and the devil, and you will find that balance within these names as well, is that you must be the one, according to living a clean, benevolent, and happy life, and you will be the alcoholic for your family, for yourself, for your brotherhood, stand up for what's right, stand up against evil, stand up against anything that might be there for your downfall and to know that we are made in the divine image of god and there is the aspect of imperfection that we're taught in a lot of these brotherhoods is that everyone's imperfect but we were made in the image of the creator so we are perfect in the way that we were created it's our nature that's imperfect that's what we need to work on and to hone those qualities so we can raise our station and become one with the divinity and to shape our reality. Because if let's say a thousand people in one area got off of drugs, got off of alcohol, respected themselves, respected their families, how better would the frequency of that area get spiritually? It would get so much better. And ultimately they can change the um, outcome of that neighborhood overnight. You go to a lot of these bad neighborhoods and say, if thousand of you in this one area became benevolent, changed your habits, started living a good, clean life, what kind of reality would you manifest here? So ultimately, it falls on us as a collective. If we collectively choose to just worry about ourselves and be in the state of um, anxiety and fear and not helping anybody and falling into uh, traps of division and hatred, then we will create a reality that is not complementary to being al Kali, al musabir So we are the creators of our reality. That's what Allah is teaching us with this name. al Ghafar, he is full of forgiveness, one who makes manifest what is beautiful and conceals what is ugly. Yes, so al Ghafar is telling us, be forgiving, be merciful. And um, anything from your past, just let it go. Let it go and put it on a bridge and let it float away. Any traumas or hurts, any anxieties you must have experienced because all of our, if we only had good moments in our life, then we wouldn't be who we are today. And, you know, the, the thing is that my brother is, the aspect is, is that we must find that balance within ourselves and learn to forgive ourselves and know that I shouldn't let the guilt of the past eat me up because maybe God is preparing me for a future that complements those experiences that I went through and helps me become who I am because of those experiences that educated me along the way. So al Ghafar is telling you to ultimately forgive yourself. Forgive yourself and then you'll be able to do that for others. And once you can forgive yourself and others, that's when you can humanity can start to create heaven on earth, including what we see in a lot of these brotherhoods right now where they're all fighting with each other online. And the, the normal people are looking at you like, what's the difference between us and them? They're supposed to be better than us and be the better example, but they're just like us fighting with each other. So learn forgiveness, let the ego go. That's what this name is teaching us. Alcohar, the dominator, one who breaks the backs of the powerful among his enemies and subdues them by killing and humiliation. Yeah, so Alcohar is... Um, you can actually use this in, a, in a, a Sufi chant. So in order to protect yourself from enemies, one can recite yakahar, yakahar, yakahar a thousand times before you go to sleep. And that will protect you from any malevolent enemies or spiritual beings that might try to harm you and your family. And this is basically telling you is God is the one who's ultimately destined to win. 
you have the aspect of evil, my brother, you know, the aspect of evil with these different industries that exist in this world. And they go on the stage and say, thank you, God. Thank you for giving me all this. Which God are they talking about? They're talking about the God of this realm, Iblis, Shaitan, who gave them their, their riches and all that stuff. But ultimately, this is a chess game. And we're stuck in the middle in the black and white tiles. And God and, and the good is what's destined to win in the end. And even they know that. And they're just seeing how much they can get away with before Al-Kahar subdues them and restores order to these realms. And that's what it's saying. But in like an esoteric point of view, like a spiritual point of view, to protect yourself from any enemies that try, might, might try to harm you or your family, you can recite that a thousand times before going to sleep. And you will put a shield of light and protection around you and your family. So that, that's powerful. Like that's a powerful name. Al-Wahhab, the bestower, giver of a gift free from recompensant interests. Yeah, so Al-Wahhab is, is teaching us the aspect of charity that we find in Freemasonry and these different brotherhoods. Is that when you do something for a brother or you do something for your family, you do something for somebody, you don't do it just because they're going to praise you or give you respect or you're expecting anything from them. You do it from the goodness of your own heart. You do it to help them. And you do it because you know the grand architect of the universe will reward you for that one day. And there's a story of a Masonic past master I know, great human being, you know, may God bless him. And he lived next to a family who had little kids in the house. And it was a mother, father, and kids, and they were suffering financially. Their Pico bill had got cut off. And their Pico bill was like, I think, two or three months worth, worth of bills. And it was like $1,200. And his savings so far that he was saving money from his job was at 1400 or something. And he gave them all the money without asking them for anything back, not asking them for any thanks, realizing that I'm helping a family. And ultimately, if I bless them, if God is using me to bless them, then somebody will bless me through somebody else. And that same past master, a week later, his car broke down like 50 miles away from his home. And he found um, somebody that hooked up his car to their tow truck for free and took him all the way back to his home and took his car to the garage without taking a single cent from him. So Al-Wahhab tells you that what you give out, it will be given back to you. If you're merciful and kind to your fellow creatures, that's what will be given to you. And I've seen so many events and stories that can confirm this. And be a man that gives without expecting anything in return. That is the true quality of the Sufi and the Mason. Al Razak, the provider, creator, created the means of sustenance as well as those who are sustained. It covenants the means to the creatures as well as creating for them ways of enjoying them. Yes, exactly. So Al Razak means that he's the one that provides for us. He's the provider. Even you have the homeless person on the street brother and you will see many aspects that person doesn't have anything he doesn't have a family doesn't have a home doesn't have a car doesn't have nothing somehow some way he's gonna find a shelter by the end of the day where he can sleep he can use the bathroom he can rest he can eat food and drink water because al razak through the different qualities of the humans that exist around us we're here we're helping each other you pray to god and some human shows up in front of you, that's basically God coming to help you through that, you know, through that different human that comes in your life, such as the aspect of the man on the boat. The man on the boat was drowning and he cried out to God for help. God sent the boats his way through the aspects of different human beings. So Al-Razak is telling us that even if this, in this worldly point of view, you might have nothing, somehow, some way you will still be provided for and keeping that faith and not fearing anything in front of you, you shall always be provided for by the one who sees all and hears all. Alpha Ta, the opener, one whose providence, whatever is closed us, opened, and by guidance, whatever is unclear is disclosed. You know, this is the one of the most powerful names of Allah. Alpha Ta is the one that opens all of the gateways and locks that are in your life. This is basically a mantra for the law of attraction. And Alpha Ta, I um, was in a situation one time 
where uh, one of my cousin's um, children, their visa was stuck in an embassy overseas and their visa was not being processed. So what I did was for a week or two weeks straight, I closed my eyes and I envisioned my cousin and uh, you know the child in front of me, standing in front of me, and I recite, yeah, patahu, yeah, patahu, yeah, patahu, yeah, patahu, and for like a 30 or 40 minutes straight, every night before I went to sleep. And uh, two weeks later, she got the news that this is impossible. The embassies are closed due to the pandemic. They're not talking to anybody. And all of a sudden I get an email that come pick up your passport with the visa. So this mantra is to invoke that power of Allah or the grand architect. And by using that law of attraction within yourself and use that frequency to whatever you want to manifest, close your eyes and recite this name as much as you can. And that door will open for you. And that's telling you that the one who's in charge of the heavens and the earth through you and by manifesting that name, you can also be the opener of many doors yourself. Ella Lane, the omniscient. Perfection lies in comprehending by everything by knowledge and with respect to the multitude of objects known, this will be infinite. Yes, so in our aspects of self-improvement, we're trying to work our way back to perfection in Freemasonry, which is to every day chip away at your rough ashlar until you become a smooth ashlar. And think every day, is there something that I could have done better today? Is there something that I could have said better? Is there something that I could have handled in a better way? Could I have said something to her in a better way? Said something to him in a better way? So ultimately, the omniscient is telling us that exemplify the characters of Allah, the grand architect, by being a better human being every day through your own physical temple that has manifested here on this earth be better be loving be merciful be forgiving and show those qualities of the most high in your own life and ultimately you will find your way back to perfection where no mistake no ego no hatred or no confusion of any kind exists that might hinder you or cause division between you based on the worldly aspects of race religion gender politics by being perfect, everything is one. And that's what it's telling us to exemplify that within our own selves. al quibid and al basit he who contracts, he who expands. One who appropriates souls from dead bodies at death and extends soul to bodies at quickening. Now, my brother, you will see at the, a lot of the initiatic schools that exist or a lot of mystery schools that exist, or any spiritual path you follow, there's always the concept of death and rebirth, that you become better when you go through order out of chaos. And sometimes in order for you to get rise up stronger than before, sometimes you have to fall down. So this is telling us is that he's the one, the Al-Kabid and the Al-Basit, the one who will make you better when you go through those cycles of order out of chaos. And you will become better in that process in that death to rebirth cycle where even the prophet muhammad said that you have to die before you die what that means is you have to let yourself go from this world in order for you for you to reach higher realms you have to be able to let go of this world let go of this dunya that they tell you in islam there's dunya and then there's deen the faith and the world you have to walk the middle so you can get back into the graces of the most high which we have fallen from in our fallen state currently and it's telling us that he's the one that, you know, when the time comes on the day of judgment, he will raise us from our uh, slumber and we will be held accountable on those days, depending on our actions. And that will decide where we go. But we have the power to do that right now within our current physical lifetime as to realize is that what is life? What is death? What is reality? What's the gray matter? What's in between? Where are we? Who was I before I came here? Where am I going to go after this life is over? And that's telling you to find that realization within your own soul so you can find your way back home. Like Rumi says that if you want you find your way back home, look within your own heart because that's where Allah is. al kafid and Al-Rafi, the abaser, the exalter, one who abases infidels with damnation and raises up the faithful by salvation. Yeah, so a lot of people uh, get confused by the definition of infidel. They think that infidel means that anybody that's a non-Muslim, but that's incorrect because 
if you look at Holy Quran, Surah 2, verse 62, it tells you that it doesn't matter if you're a Muslim, Sabian, Jewish, Christian, as long as you do right by God, do right by others and believe in the Lord and the last day, then you shall have no grief or punishment on the day of judgment. Same thing with Surah 49, verse 10. Mankind are believers in one brotherhood. And, you know, what it's telling by infidels are the ones that are against God. So a Muslim is the one who submits his will to God. Same thing a Mason. You cannot be a Mason unless you believe in God or believe in a higher power. These are the ones who, I guess you could say, dark occultist or dark Satanist or, you know, people that are into like dark pagan rites. Anything that goes against the benevolent human nature. That's what al Kafi and Al-Rafi is telling us, is that he's the one that will hold those people accountable and the household of the faithful, as you know, the brotherhood teaches us, we will be the ones that will be held in high regard when the time comes and we will be the ultimate victors in the fight between good and evil. So we have to exemplify that here in that physical temples by invoking Al-Kali, al Kafi, and Al-Rafi within ourselves is to stand up against evil where we might see it. And the Mason does that with his own life on the line, if necessary. Amuziz and al Hill, the honorer, he who humbles, one who gives dominion to whomever he wills and removes it from whoever he wills. And this, this is the perfect one because Allah is the one who turns sinners into saints and saints into sinners overnight. And this reminds me of the story of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani, Muhammad A, the one who was a founder of the Qadiriya Sufi order. And he was walking with his disciples one day in the market, and they saw a homeless man sitting on the street begging for food and money. And he told his disciples, and the Sheikh is the equivalent of a worshipful master or a grandmaster. So he looked at his disciples and said, You see that man sitting over there? And they started paying attention. Yes, we see him. And he said that that man is better than me and he has a higher station than me. And they got shocked that Sheikh, why would you say that? You're our master and he's just a beggar. He said, no, he said overnight, Allah can take my dominion away from me and give that to him and put me in his position and put him in my position. So this is basically telling us that the grand architect of the universe, Allah, in whichever way you perceive that name, or you perceive that reality and divinity in your own unique way, he's the one that will give you rewards, happiness, forgiveness. But at the same time, if you step out of line, he's the one that gives you punishment and humiliation as well. Because obviously there's a balance. We didn't just come here to have good times. The black and white system, the black and white tile system, good times, bad times, bad times, good times. So we must maintain that balance within our own selves as the physical temples in order to be in the graces of the al muiz and the al mudil and find that within our own selves to live a life of balance and judgment and not to fall into any extremity of any side find the balance in the middle so that way whether something is given to you or taken from you you are resilient in each phase that the grand architect puts you through and one thing we always think of when this one is, is that those who are exalted will be humbled. Those who are humbled will be exalted. And that yes. what Prophet Isa said, peace, peace be among him, among his parables. Yeah, that's right, Brian. So the next one is Al-Sami, the all-hearing, one who from whose perception nothing audible is removed, even is it if it be hidden. Yes, so... Al-Sami is basically telling us the all hearing is that no matter where we go, my brother, is that the Al-Sami is going to be able to hear everything. A lot of people that conspire against humanity um, in whatever dark chambers that they're conspiring, it might be even 100 miles underground. Al-Sami, that quality of the grand architect of the universe, he's hearing everything and he will hold you accountable. And on the day of judgment, we believe that even your tongue, your, your hands, your, your ears, your fingers, your tongue, everything will testify against you that this is what this individual said by using me. This is what the fingers will say in the hands that he used my hands for these actions and this action. So the all hearing is telling us is that 
be perceptive of everything and everyone around you, whether it's good or bad, Brother Bashir, and to be you know perceptive and learn from everything in, the, in your quest for knowledge and self-improvement and the pursuit of happiness and all that good stuff. We must be able to, you know, find that balance within ourselves, and to, you know, be able to perceive all those things. So be perceptive, is that's what you know that name is teaching us. And there's one, also one thing that about all hearing is that uh, when Cain killed Abel, Allah said that He could hear um, Abel's voice from the ground. Yes. So that's the all hearing. Uh, yes. Al Basir, the all seeing. So this is, the, this is the other one. One who witnesses and sees in such a way nothing is remote from him, even what is under the earth. And this is my brother complimentary to your name, Al-Basir. <laughs> and this is the all-seeing eye of the grand architect of the universe, the one we see on the back of the dollar bill. And what this teaches us is that the all-seeing grand architect knows everything before it happens. And the perfect story I can give is one of Iblis. Iblis was a, um, a powerful angel, like even higher than some of the archangels. He was like a cherubim and he was worshiping Allah and loving Allah, teaching the angels how to read the Quran, do the prostrations, pray, all that good stuff. And then he went to the third realm where the emerald tablets are located or the lost tablets, which is the knowledge of the grand architect. And on that tablet, he saw a, it's what a lot of the spiritual people call the Akashic records. So a thousand years in the future, he saw that there will be somebody who disobeyed Allah. And he was shocked. Who could that be? He was not realizing he was reading about his own self because the all-seeing al-Basir already knew that he was going to worship me for a thousand years. And then his pride was going to get the best of him. And that's when the fall of man started and the internal struggle between light and dark. So what this is teaching us to be all-seeing is be perceptive. Be perceptive of everyone and everything around you. You might have friends and family today that might become something else tomorrow, but be forgiving in the same aspect, knowing that maybe now they're meant to play a different role. Because remember, we're all actors, right? On a stage playing our own scripts and roles. So Iblis was meant to play a role for a thousand years of worshiping Allah. And the next thousand years, maybe he was meant to harm humanity. And a thousand years after his drug destruction, he might be used for another role because the all seeing has already perceived what's going to come after and what's going to come before. And how are we used in the grand scheme of things in all of these different roles that are out there? So we must realize I've seen it with my own eyes, Brother Basir, is that you'll have people, family and friends that might be enemies tomorrow. And then the next day they become friends again. And then, you know, so on and so on. That is just the inevitable balance that we find ourselves in. That's a human nature. You have relationships in the West where, you know, they might be into somebody's life, a girlfriend or boyfriend. They might love each other for the time being and honor each other's qualities. But when that uh, chaos comes and they play their role, then they will denounce that person and call them every single name in the book. But why didn't you do that when they were with you? Why? Because now they're meant to play a different role. And that's the thing. Everyone has a different role. This world is a guest house. People come and go in our lives like seasons, years. Everything comes to teach you something. But just because that person might not be in your life anymore doesn't mean that you have the right to denounce them. Maybe now their purpose and light is required elsewhere. Just like how you change jobs, you change homes. Your, your, your thing is like a storybook because you have to be all seeing. And that's why even when you start the Masonic journey, know that you're not going to become a master in a year or be a master mason in three months you got to be able to know that okay this is a lifelong journey and i'm going to be learning till the day that i leave this earth so al basir is teaching us is to be al basir yourself like you my brother and to see what's ahead of you what's behind you and how can you use that to benefit you without keeping your cool in good and bad moments that's so uh it's a very deep aspect, you know, once he decides to get into it. Definitely. Uh, Al-Hakim, the arbitrator, arbitrating magistrate, and the avenging judge whose ruling no one overturns and whose decree no one corrects. Yeah, so God is the, you know, our supreme grandmaster of the universe, how, you know, we're taught 
in, um, in the brotherhood that the supreme grand architect of the universe is the supreme grand master. And what he says goes, and we have to be the ones in our life to get into his graces in whatever path you choose to follow. Do right, find what works for you. All of these faiths are teaching you the truth in their own way, but find what works for you and be the best human being that you possibly can for yourself, for your brothers, for your family, for your loved ones, not to be a bigot, not to be prejudiced, not to call somebody your brother in lodge and then go online and post something against their race or religion because you know they're going to see that and they're going to get hurt by it. So be a man of your word in all of the aspects where your life takes you in your workplace, in your home, with your family, in any organizations you're involved in. Because the arbitrator, because you know, when you get that arbitration notice, you better show up in front of the judge. And that's, you know, al-hakam. You have to find that al-hakam within yourself. Be al-hakam and then al-hakam, when you go to that other realm, will be fair to you. So it's give and take. And you get out what you put into it, like what masonry teaches. So if you avoid justice and if you avoid holding yourself accountable, then you will be asked for that. You can't run away from your problems. There might be people who might run away from one notice. They might get a notice in the mail. They'll run away from it. They'll get a second notice. They'll run away from it. Eventually, somebody's going to show up at your home. Like, where are you? So better to hold yourself accountable before the higher powers do and to take responsibility for your actions and be better. And that's that's what Al Hakam is teaching us. Next one is Al Adil, the just mm -hmm. means one who is just, and he is one for whom just action mingles the opposite of injustice and oppression. Yeah, so Al Adal, the quality of the Mason, the one who walks the initiatic path, the one who stands up against the wicked, the one who stands up for justice the one who protects the weak and defenseless against the wicked ones. And you know, my brother, is that one who starts walking this path, you will start attracting the agents of chaos in your life. And they, they're they not restricted to America alone. They can be found in all races, religions, and countries of the world, where when you, when you are a seeker of justice, they'll know who you are. They will identify you by your light. And they will try to get in your way to try to demoralize you and stop you. But it's telling us that if Al Adal, if that's one of the qualities of the grand architect and he's the justice bringer, then why can't you do it? Right? Because we're, we're in that struggle, right? Between light and dark. So you must be Al Adal yourself in the esoteric point of view to be a justice bringer and justice seeker and wherever you might see it. And that's why you see, you know, a lot of the aspects of fighting for what's right, upholding the society and law or wherever else you have the aspects of protecting the law and protecting the people that are under your system, those are, those are uh, identified as the al-adal, the justice bringers of the grand architect. Next one, uh, one of my favorite ones is al-latif, the benevolent. One is deserving of this name if one knows the subtleties of those who are beneficial. Yes, so al-latif is the one who is charitable, the one who's kind the one who's loving, the one who will give without expecting anything in return, the one who will love his fellow men and women without expecting anything in return, the one who will forgive without expecting anything. And Al-Latif is the one that shows the quality of God where in Islam we say that, uh, you know, God loves us 70 times more than our mother does. And a mother is always covering up the faults in front of the father, making sure that she doesn't tell about the father what happened or you know if the kid got into a fight she tries to cover him up and protect him so Allah is you know Allah the grand architect who loves us 70 times more than a mother loves her child and if we are to able to reach that understanding and comprehension of what that truly means and feels then we need to start acting benevolent don't act from the ego don't act from your uh, lower nature don't be in a state of fear anxiety and hatred because if you know what's written for you that and, you know, what, whatever is written for you cannot escape you, then how can you be in a place where you can't be benevolent? I've been in so many situations through the black and white tile system, and I knew somehow, some way, my problems were already taken care of because I, I persevered and I believed. And as long as we believe in Allah and the grand architect, then 
you don't have nothing to worry about. The only thing you should fear is fear itself. Al Kabir, the totally aware, one from whom no secret information is hidden, for nothing goes on the realms of heaven or earth. No atom moved, and no soul is stirred or calm without his being aware of it. Yes. So this uh, tells me about the story of Iblis and the and the third realm, where Allah already knew a thousand years in the future what was going to happen, and how the aspect of you have the story of King Solomon and the fish. And this is an Islamic Sufi story. And in King Solomon and the fish, King Solomon uh, basically had challenged Allah and said, I will give food to your creation and provide you, uh, food for your creation here on this earth, since I'm one of the most richest uh, kings in the world. And Allah said, OK, you know, I'll, I'll take you up on that. And then there was a fish, you know, like one of these creatures from the you know, bottom realms of the sea like these huge monstrosities that human doesn't even know, like what's really going on down there. And one of them came up and said, provide me what you have. And he gave all the food that had existed in the entire realms of the earth. And the, still the fish was not satisfied and the fish was hungry. And there were like fishes that were like 10 times more bigger than him. And King Solomon got worried. Prophet Suleiman, peace be upon him. He said that if I can't even feed this one fish with all the food of the world, what am I going to do? There's 10 more right in line behind him. And so what Allah did was, you know, see, I told you I'm the provider. And he sent like a, a bubble. It was like a bubble of something, an ether. <clears throat> and that went inside the fish and the fish was satisfied. And King Solomon got shocked. I gave him all of this food and all that. He still wasn't satisfied. And that one bubble that Allah sent into his stomach satisfied everything he had within him. So, you know, the Al-Kabir, he's totally aware of what he needs to do. The ants and the rocks, the inner earth beings, everything, upper earth, whatever, my brother, everything gets provided for. Nobody goes to sleep by not being provided for. Somehow, some way, our problems get taken care of in the heavens and the earth because the one who's in charge of it, he's holding us in the palm of his hands. And he knows that we're in this dream ride trying to work our way back into his graces. And he knows what we need at what time. This life is like a video game. You'll find the right character, the right item, the right person, the right situation at the right time. Because he's the orchestrator, the aware of Kabir. And it's telling you to be aware. Be aware of what's in front of you, what's behind you, what mistakes in your past you know, got you into trouble, and how can you avoid those mistakes in the future so you can have a better quality life for yourself and your family. So it's telling you to take responsibility and be aware and not be arrogant as the lesson that, you know, King Solomon learned about, you know, trying to become the provider. So that that's his position. We are just here to do our part. Al Halim the mild, one who observes the disobedience and rebellious and notices the opposition to the command. Yet anger does not incite him nor wrath seize him nor do, do haste and recklessness move him to rush to take vengeance, although he is utterly capable of doing that. Sure. So uh, Al-Halim is telling us to circumscribe our desires and live within due bounds from a Masonic point of view and how the aspect of temperance, one of the cardinal virtues, and how a lot of these initiatic schools and Sufism, you have many aspects, my brother, where they'll try to test you through anger, through impatience. They'll try to put you in these different situations to test you. That is this person who, is, is he who he really says that he is? So they will put you in these different scenarios. A lot of these people that claim would be spiritual, put them in a state of anxiety and panic and pressure. Let's see how he acts. So I've experienced that, you know, in a lot of these places. And I knew, yo, you know, Sal, you gotta keep your cool. Maybe you're being tested. You gotta keep your cool. You gotta stay temperate and not let your lower nature, where your lower nature just wants to fight and just destroy everything in front of you. And ultimately you end up regretting that. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have handled it in a better way. Maybe I was being tested when I was walking across the street and the beggar angrily yelled at me, hey, give me the money. But who do I know in Pakistan that that same beggar was a Sufi who was testing me to see like, let me see what he's really about. You know, he's saying all this good stuff, but let me put him in a situation, see if he's going to uh, talk to me in an angry way and respond to me in an angry way, or is he going to show me that he's the better person? 
So that's telling us to keep our cool through life and we will be fine and control ourselves. Alazim the Tremendous. What fills the eyes and captures his attention and what sight cannot conceivably encompass in all of its extremities? Yes. So that's basically, again, Alazim is telling us what, you know, Al-Basir, it complements Al-Basir as the one who's all seeing that nothing from his eyes and, you know, the aspect of the eye of providence can escape his grasp. He knows everything that's happening here, including our conversation right now. And he's aware, all knowing, all hearing, and all seeing. And the grand architect of the universe is, you know, what we're trying to work our graces back to. As you know, with the Sufi, he refers to the grand architect or Allah as his beloved. And that's basically a form of tremendous love, tremendous energy, genderless, formless. It's just pure love, light, and energy. And when you see the Sufi whirling for like hours and hours straight, he's trying to work his way back into that reality to, uh, you know, into the graces of the most high. And by being tremendous, you see the world in the bigger pictures and you see that, Hey, every race and religion is teaching you the same thing. I go to every country. They're all struggling with the same thing, how to have a job, how to feed their families, how to take care of their kids. A lot of these poor families are struggling. How do I get my daughters married? How do I send my son to school? How can we start a business and feed our families? And, you know, in my journey from going to the east to the west and the west to the east, I realized that the human family, my brother, everyone is struggling in their own ways. So we need to expand our um, perceptions and be tremendous in our empathy and in our knowledge. That's what al -Azim is teaching us. Absolutely. The next one is Al Gafar, the all forgiving one who is full of forgiveness. Yes. So that complements, you know, the name that we dealt with before is to be forgiving, be the better person, pick up the phone and call somebody and tell them I forgive them. Even if they don't respond to you, then the grand architect of the universe has witnessed you being the better person and you will be rewarded for that by being a man of a benevolent nature. Al Shakar, the grateful, one who rewards the practice of few pious deeds, many folds, and in response to the actions of a few days, gives limitless happiness in the life to come. Yes, definitely. So in this life, you know, my brother is the ones who give their life and service to others. They're the ones who are held in higher regard into the next realm. We have the story of Guru Nanak from Sikhism who's also followed the path of Islam and has went to Mecca and Medina to do the pilgrimage. And um, he was given money from a lot of his, um, uh, I think it was his father-in-law or his father that had given him money to start a business. And instead of starting a business, he went to the local place where there were in homeless encampment and he used all that money to feed everybody. And that's something that follows in the Sikh tradition today where you could show up at any Sikh temple anywhere in the world any country, any city, and just show up, say, I'm hungry, I need your help. They're not gonna ask you what's your gender, race, religion, any of that stuff. They're gonna tell you, you come here twice a day to have breakfast and lunch as long as you need to. No one's gonna ask you anything until you're able to get back up on your own feet. And this it tells us a story of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him also, where there were many people that came to him and said, you know, uh, oh, prophet of God, there's a pious man we see in the mosque that's praying five times a day, and he's doing all of these great things. And the prophet said that, okay, that's good and all that. He's, he's, he's doing all of that. But who's the one that's providing for him, bringing him food, bringing him toiletries, bringing him, you know, the aspect of the human hygiene system. And he said, it, it's us, the local people. And he said, you're better than him. That's the aspect of Kidma. Ashakur, the grateful and the one who provides for others. And when you live in your life in service of, of others, like feeding the homeless and feeding those uh, like less fortunate, then Allah will provide for you in the next life. Like, you know, Allah says that you take 10 steps towards me, I'll take 100 steps towards you. Because that's how much the creator loves us to work our way back into his graces. So the aspect of Al-Shakur is live your life in service to others, exemplify being Al-Shakur in this life, and you will be 
there's not one deed that will escape the eye of the grand architect. You will be rewarded for that. Al Ali, uh, the most high, one who above whose rank is there is no rank and all ranks are inferior to him. Yeah, so that's basically the most high creator. And this is basically telling us to, I mean, the way that it's implied, it will tell you to look down upon others. But Al Ali is telling you to be on the level. No one's above you or beneath you. And if we're all on the level, then there is no rank that's lower or higher. We're all in this together. It doesn't matter what your degree or titles are, or if you have a MW or RW or 33 or PM next to your name, what's any of that going to do for you in this life or the next? What, it, what, what is going to help you is that you took the time to sit down with people who are beneath you or supposedly what society tells you that these people are from a lower socioeconomic status or they're beneath you or they're this and that. Take, take the time to love and listen to everybody. And I've been fortunate enough and the grand architect has blessed me where I've gotten to sit with all different kinds of circles in any country you can imagine. And I see how people operate and we must be able to teach them that no one is above you or beneath you. Everyone's the same. If I have the opportunity to learn from a person younger than me, uh, and I know that whatever they want to say to me will benefit me. I won't get offended. A lot of cultures tell you to be offended when the younger is trying to teach you something. I will sit down with him or her and hear them out and not be arrogant or egotistic about it. If there's anybody older than me, I will give them the same respect. So by being the most high, we are all an exemplification of that. Right now, we're in a state of lowerness. For all of us to be the most high and work our way back into his graces, we have to exemplify those characters and qualities. Next one is going to be <clears throat> Al-Kabir, the great. One who possesses greatness, where greatness is identical with perfection of essence and by perfection of essence. Yes, so Al-Kabir is basically telling us is to be a man or a woman of great greatness, and bigger qualities and to be the bigger person where anything you do should always reflect back upon you. Unfortunately, we have a society today, Brother Basir, that when you call somebody out for something or you tell them and you might love that person, you know, it's not like you hate them, but they get defensive. They don't take responsibility. They don't try to be the bigger person. They don't try to learn from what you're trying to teach them. So, and they try to run away from their problems and ultimately they end up traumatizing themselves even more because they chose not to address the, the leakage that was already happening on floor one and they're still working their way up to floor 10 while the whole building's being flooded. So Al-Kabir is telling us is that in order to be great, you must realize the perfection and essence of what it means to be great and be better, know better, and do better, and think better. And ultimately, that's what you will manifest here. Al-Hafiz, the all-preserver, perfect uh, preserver, sustaining and providing. Yes, yes, my brother. Just like how Allah, the grand architect, has preserved all life and mankind on this planet since day one, through all of the calamities and destruction and wars and floods and death and rebirth, Every, all the cycles that humanity has been through, Al-Hafiz has preserved everything. Everything has been preserved. And we are the ones that are in that quality aspect where we inherit our freedoms and our way of life from those who fought for it because they had preserved it. So by being Al-Hafiz ourselves, we are the ones that must become the preserver and pass those traditions on to the future generation and give them a world in a better condition that we inherited it because we preserved it from the previous ones and handed it down to them. So we must take responsibility for our communities as well. And that's what Al-Hafiz is telling us is that if the Most High can preserve the world and humanity for thousands upon years, why can't you do that for your family and community, pass on your traditions and values? And the name Hafiz, Hafiz is the one that memorizes the Quran because he's preserving the tradition of passing the um, teachings on to the next uh, family or to the next of his kin. He memorizes all 114 surahs front to back, back to front verbatim. And Hafiz is equivalent to the worshipful master, the one in his lodge who memorizes all of the work because he's trying to pass that tradition 
which was given to him by the elders, and he's passing it on to his generation by being Al Hafiz, the All Preserver, an exemplification of the Most High. Next one is oops, sorry about that. Uh, we are <clears> going <throat> to Al Muki, the Nourisher. Uh, creator of nourishment and the one who delivers them to bodies as food and to hearts as knowledge. Yes, yes. So the nourisher is the one who provides for us, Al Mukit, and he uses us as sons, friends, brothers, husbands, fathers, daughters, whatever you name it for humanity. The one that nourishes, the nourisher, the provider, the creator. So you have that aspect of when you have a mother who's taking care of her child or a father that's taking care of their child, they go and they work these long hours, they struggle, they cry, they, they laugh. They do all those things so they can come home and provide for their children, put food on the table for them. And when they do something wrong or there's time to impart knowledge to them, they do it because they love that creation that was used by the grand architect through their vessels to create that being. So the nourisher is al-mukit, which is basically you see it exemplified by every parent who's working hard to nourish their child with food and knowledge and in their upbringing and in their uh, in trying to raise them in a correct way. Same thing um, you have in a lot of these initiatic systems where you sit down with your brothers before you uh, impart with knowledge and sit down and break bread. So you share that love of food with each other, and then you sit down and share knowledge with each other, because that's al-mukit, the nourisher, as exemplified in the initiatic systems and in households with parents, with those that we care for, we love for. So that's telling us to be giving. Sit down with somebody, break bread with them, impart your knowledge on them. Don't hoard everything within yourself. What good has that done for anybody who have hoarded wealth, resources, food, and knowledge? and they have not given it to anybody. Are they gonna take it with them when they die? Nope. They're actually gonna be held accountable on the other side, which you know, the aspect of being an alms giver is exemplified in each faith and initiatic system. It tells you give 10% of your income to the needy or you know, don't be stingy, help somebody, help a brother if he reaches out and asks you for help. Like that past master who only had $1,400 of savings and he helped that family to keep their lights on with the Pico bill, which was like $1,200 with the electric and gas combined. So when you are the nourisher, then that's when the grand architect helps you in return through these different exemplifications that I gave him. You must be al keep yourself. <clears throat> Al-Hasib, the reckoner, one who suffices for he is all one needs who belongs to him. Yes, so you know that aspect of what we saw earlier of you know, the one that's the proud. So Al-Hasib is the same one who will cause reckoning among those who fall away and astray from the path of the grand architect. And how many stories have you heard where civilizations were raised? And there probably were, were even times, we don't know, a lot of history has been revised where you might have had civilizations that might have been more advanced than us, spiritually, technologically, spiritually, emotionally, we just see what's in front of us. We don't know what has been in the past. So the reckoner is the one who comes and wipes the slate clean when humanity falls astray. And uh, you know, you have that story of uh, Hinduism and it says, uh, I think it was Krishna who had instructed one of his followers to go and destroy the entire village. And the, I think one of the followers says that, how, how can I do that? Some of them are my family members. Some of them are my friends. And he said, nope, they're too far gone. This society has engulfed them in, into its roots too much. So the reckoner is the one who comes and wipes the slate clean. So how you exemplify being the reckoner is not with the way that the grand architect does by you know cleaning the earth and rebuilding humanity again. We do it in our way by making sure that we chip away at our lower nature, at our rough ashlar, and to be better in our nature and get back in the graces of the most high and to help our family and friends see the light, the ones who are uh, being, how do you say, they're falling victim to this, the way that this society thinks, where they tell you um, chase after money, chase after degrees, 
or you you won't be seen successful in Asian cultures like you know with a lot of you know a lot of my culture if you don't have your own business your own car your own home not everyone's meant to be a businessman maybe somebody's a worker everybody has a quality that helps them but in their greed they end up hurting themselves and their family just to say oh I own this or I have this so the reckoner is the one ultimately you destroy your own self so all of these qualities and these attributes they're either good or they're you're going to end up destroying yourself that balance one cannot exist without the other so the al hasib in order to protect yourself from the reckoner be mindful of your thoughts actions what this world is telling you how we have this concept of uh here in the west where man doesn't regard women women doesn't regard men you're jumping from one relationship to another full of trauma full of hurt full of baggage not healing themselves because the reckoner is getting the best of them and they're telling them okay you're choosing not to get your act together and heal yourself and love yourself and forgive yourself first then i will continue to reckon upon you so that's what we need to do is we need to hold ourselves accountable in order to be uh you know the aspect of being protected and being in the graces of the most high next one al jalil the majestic one qualified by the attributes the attributes of majesty yeah so al jalil my brother is basically the one who's majestic so when you go and uh, see a priest or a sheikh or um anyone that's you know a beautiful human being you can see you can feel somebody's energy and vibration and you know what kind of person that they are so the majestic is telling you to uh basically hone those qualities of the grand architect of the universe and the most high within your own self and be majestic in all your knowing doing thinking and understanding with yourself and others al karim the generous one who forgives if he has the power follows through when he promises and exceeds the limits one could hope for when he gives nor is he concerned how much he gives or to whom he gives yeah so being karim al karim is the one that's generous and that's exemplified with the grand architect of the universe allah and every day he he raises the sun the moon the crops are being grown through the power of the sun food gets provided to billions of people and he's he's not expecting anything from anybody in return because he is self sufficient he loves his creation he cares for his creation somehow some way even the animals in the wild will find food homeless people will find food crops are growing through his graces with the power of the sun we thank god and the grand architect for blessing us with food even in this different initiatic systems and brotherhoods because look at all those phases that food went through to get to you on that plate and on that table and he is the one that forgives you when you ask for forgiveness with an honest heart and intention and he's telling you basically in an exemplification of those qualities of being al karim be a generous human being be forgiving be loving be knowing just forgive and let go know that whatever happens happens for a reason and everything happens the way that it was meant to now a lot of people say that why did things work out the way that they did because it was meant to be played out that way maybe you said something and did something that was meant to be carried out that the way that it was uh, a story we have is from the, the the second matrix movie where when they go try to get the key maker and uh they go see the the frenchman and this, i think something happens in their conversation when then they're escorted out of the place and uh neo says is there something that we did wrong and morpheus says nope everything played out that the way that it was supposed to and they got put into an elevator and they were worried that they had failed in their mission and when they got down on the elevator what they were looking for was right in front of them so there's no such thing as a coincidence in your life especially in the way things get carried out and if you're forgiving you're knowing you're promising you're loving then he's the one who will be generous to you when you carry those qualities and all your calamities and anxieties will be provided for and removed from your life per se next one is um al rakib the all observant one who one who knows and protects sure so the all observant goes back to what we have with al basir the all knowing 
So you have to, in order to protect yourself and your family and your loved ones and your friends, you got to know what's ahead of you and what's behind you, what happened in my past and how can I shape that for my future, etc. So in order to observe the qualities of al Rakib, you must be the one that knows and protects. And that includes knowledge, information, the aspect of what's right and what's wrong, morality, and everything else that comes in between in this life, knowledge, be better, know better, do better. And that ultimately you will be the all observant yourself. Uh, Al Majib, the answer of our prayers is the one who responds to the request of those who ask by assisting them to call on those who call upon him by answering them and respond to the plight of the poor or with all they need. Yes. So again, when somebody prays to God, my brother, you will have a being who will be his conduit as an ex, um, you know, expression of that divinity manifested here on this earth that will go and help that person. And it will, that's basically God sending you help in their own mysterious way. And a story that I have is uh, back in the summertime when there was a lot of racial unrest going on in the United States, there was a woman from Africa who I saw barefoot walking in the park she was crying and asking out to God for help. She said, Jesus, please help me. God, please help me. And then people were, the other people that were walking around got worried. Is this is something wrong with this woman? Is something wrong with her mentally? Is she sick? And I think one of the neighbors had ended up calling the police and there was already a lot of tension in the air. And I was walking by and she was crying out to God for help. And I'm like, oh, you know, this is it. I'm being used to help this woman. And I, I ran over to her by the time the cops came and I told them that she's okay. She's just praying to God. She's just releasing her frustration because of her losing her father and her son being involved in some kind of a uh, violent situation in New York city. So I said, you know, I'll, I'll calm her down. And, you know, they went away. Had I not been there, maybe the situation, maybe there might, might've been a misunderstanding created because the woman was not in a position to explain herself with the way she was wailing. So God used me for something, the answer of prayers. When somebody cries out for help, they need food, they're suffering with their family, they might just get a call or a text from somebody, hey, you're looking for work, you need a job. Is there something you're doing tomorrow? Let's go clean out this house, you'll make 100 bucks a day. So the answer of prayers is the one, is basically God will use you and will use others to help you. So you're helping them, they're helping you. So all of these prayers, we're helping each other. We're all al helping each other. We're walking by and somebody's crying out and asking for help. And God will put it in your heart. Why don't you give this person something? Get some food and give it to him. And that answers that person's plight, what they were begging God for. God, I'm hungry. Please give me food. Somehow, some way it works out, right? So we are al in the flesh, helping each other by answering prayers and others answering our prayers. Uh, well, I see the vast derives from expansiveness, and expansiveness is sometimes linked to knowledge when it extends to and comprehends a multitude of objects. And at other times, it is linked to charity and widespread blessings, extending as far as possible to whatever they dis, uh, they descend upon. Yes, my brother. So al Wasi is telling us to be charitable. So in Islam, you know, uh, we're taught to give 10% of your um, income uh, out of your whatever your monthly salary is, take like five or 10% out, whatever is it that you're capable of doing without jeopardizing yourself or your family and sponsor a poor family here in America or Asia or Africa, wherever you know that there's somebody that could benefit from your assistance. Same thing in Freemasonry. We're taught to be alms givers, be charitable, help those who cannot help themselves. So all of these paths are teaching you the same thing, exemplifying the quality of one of the names of Allah, the grand architect of being al Wasi because it's all vast. By helping you, I'm helping myself. Your money, my money, it's the same thing. But we're helping each other's happiness. And ultimately, including Freemasonry, the real wealth of all of these faiths and organizations is the memories and the love and relationships you create with one another. That is the ultimate goal. The goodness that you feel when you see somebody, you touching somebody's heart, you helping, you helping, um, a mother put her kid through school or give them a meal for a week's time 
until she gets paid from her next job. So by being the vast, we're part of this vast experience walking each other home and we owe this love and light to one another. We're, we're all in this together and what we put out is what we'll get. So always focus on the love and the relationships and the touching of each other's hearts. That's what we're here for. Everything else, I could go to sleep right now and I might not wake up, but that's the reality I'm ready to accept. Al-Hakim, the wise, one who possesses wisdom. Yeah, so Al-Hakim is telling us to be Al-Hakim yourself. In Islam and Sufism, it tells you, be in the pursuit of knowledge. Learn whatever you can from wherever you can, however you can. Same thing in Freemasonry. It tells you to learn from all great lights. All holy books are regarded as volumes of sacred laws. They're all given equal reverence. Wherever you can find esoteric knowledge, hidden knowledge, anything that helps you become a better person, become a better husband, become a better brother, son, friend, uh, anything, anything that helps you become a lover of yourself, lover of humanity, and lover of your family and your brotherhood is to be the wise. Because in order to understand what's ahead of you and what's behind you, you have to be wise. You have to learn from your mistakes and admit where you messed up and learn from it. That's when you become Al-Hakim and exemplify that trait of the grand architect within you. And whoever comes in your presence will benefit because you have activated that aspect of Al-Hakim within your heart. Al-Wadud, the loving, one who wishes all creatures well and according favors them and praises them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So Alva dude is the one who loves unconditional love for yourself, for your family, for your spouse, for your children, for humanity. Even those that, that come and disagree with you and say, oh, I don't like the way that you're doing things or this or that. You wish well for everybody because what you wish for others is what will come back to you. And there's a zikr if you're trying to invoke the love of Allah and the grand architect within your heart, they tell you to recite Yabadu 500 times before you go to sleep. So you could say Yabadu, 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 and that helps you. In addition to the Yafatahu, which is the opener to manifest love into your life in the forms of whether it's a spousal love, love of your family, love of your brotherhood, anything with the law of attraction you're trying to manifest, it will come to you because you're invoking that name of the grand architect, Allah, to put love in your life, the loving, and he's all merciful, all knowing, and all understanding, and he will put that in front of you. And you become that conduit yourself, where you learn to love others and forgive others unconditionally. Next one is um, Al-Mujid, the, glor the all-glorious, one who is noble, in essence, beautiful in actions, and bountiful in gifts and in favors. Sure. Sure. All glorious is, you know, in aspects of what, what we built upon already. One who is a man of good character, believes in God, and is of a mature age. Same thing what Freemasonry teaches us and what it expects from us. And to be a person of good character at all times, to believe that there was a purpose that we were sent here for, Brother Bashir, and to know that we didn't just get sent here to work pay taxes, pay bills, pay mortgages, and die. We were sent here to do more than that. We were manifested here on this world to do more than that. And we must be bountiful in our favors upon each other, in our love for each other, in our gifts for each other. Because it builds upon, you know, the, the aspect of love, Yavadu, is the real aspect of us being here is the relationships and the memories we share with one another. What else is our heart going to take with us when we die? Our hearts just gonna take our love, our experiences, our relationships, and what good did you do for yourself and others? That's ultimately what will make you all the all glorious. Next one is Al Bahif, the uh, raiser of the dead, one who gives creature life on the day of resurrection. Yeah, so you know Al Bahif basically tells you that the concept of die before you die, how a lot of these spiritual initiatic systems have the concept of death and rebirth within their teachings. And it tells you that you must be able to let go of this world because you might be of it, but you're not like, you're not from it. We were just, um, how do a lot of these spiritual people say that we're spiritual beings having a human experience? 
So our souls in this current physical avatars that we're in, Brother Bashir, we're here to do what we need to do. We're here to play a purpose. And as long as our purpose is fulfilled, then that's when you will leave this realm. Not a second less, not a second more. There are people that leave at a young age, at an old age, at a middle age. When you fulfill your purpose, whenever that might be, that's when you have to go. And he's the one, Al-Baik, the raiser of the dead. And how we have a lot of this, you know, teachings in the different initiatic systems as well. And how we must be able to annihilate our own self and let go of this world. How you have the three stages of the Sufi losing himself to the love of the grand architect. Fana'i e Sheikh, which is to lose himself in the service of the Sheikh. Fana'i e Rasul, to lose himself in the service of the Prophet. And the third one, Fana'i e Allah, which is to lose himself in the service of Allah, the grand architect. There's been um, different events where I went to Pakistan to a lot of these Sufi shrines. And you would see a lot of these highly adept Sufi beings sitting outside of these shrines. They have everything. They have a home, money, like whatever have you, they have it. And they're sitting outside, just staring, just staring into the space, meditating, because they know what their reality is. This is all a game. We're just hearing this one big game helping each other and all of this can come crashing down at any minute the buddha om many padme hum from india prince siddhartha he was a rich prince who had a wife kid palace riches anything that a man wishes for he had it in the palm of his hands he just walked out one day and sat under a tree and said i'm not doing nothing and lost himself in the service of nirvana to reach nirvana and to get because he knew that this is an illusion. The real reality is somewhere else. So that's what we must realize is to lose ourselves in the service of Allah and the grand architect with our love for self and others. Al-Shahid, the universal witness, refers to its meaning to knowledge with a specific addition for God, great and glorious. Yes. So we're all witnesses to each other. And that's why when we're in Islam, when somebody gets married, You'll have a witness when you are initiated into Sufism or anything else, different initiatic systems. You're always, there will be your brothers around you who will be witnesses because we are manifestations of the Al-Shahid. And Al-Shahid is the one that in order for our knowledge and be representations of the great and glorious God, Allah, and the grand architect, we are basically here to help each other. You know, his eyes are everywhere. Eyes and ears are everywhere. That's us. When you go somewhere and you have your brothers around you as witnesses, those are manifest physical manifestations of the divinity observing you and being your witness to al-Shahid. There are people who will do that for you. And there's times when you will go and do that for others. You will always exist in somebody's memory or, you know, uh, they will exist inside your memory. So al-Shahid is telling you to be a witness to everything and anyone around you. Al-Haq, the truth, one who is the opposite of falsehood, as things may become evident by their opponents. Sure. So this is basically telling us, my brother, is how we're taught in these different initiatic system and with Sufism here with the 99 names is always stand for the truth, even if it costs you everything. And here we talk about the story of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al-Jilani, Rahmatullah A. And there was a time when his mother had told him, you need to go to Baghdad. You know, my job is done with you. You have another purpose you need to fulfill. And he was uh, between the ages of five and seven, I believe so. And she had uh, stitched a pair of gold bricks into his jacket. And at that time, you had a lot of caravan robbers that would go and rob people. And they saw this little kid and said, hey, child, what do you have? And uh, he said, I have all of this gold bricks and gold currency here in my jacket. My mother had sewed into it and they wouldn't believe him. They said, oh, no, you're just fooling us. You're just a little kid. And after many after many hours of convincing the the head of the robbers, he said, all right, take off his jacket and open it up. And they saw the bricks and the robbers leader and the robbers themselves started crying in shame that we robbed these people and this kid no matter what we put him through, he spoke the truth to us. And they all ended up becoming his disciples. So God is the best of all planners. Allah, the grand architect, he knows what's in front, what's behind. 
there's nobody that can come in your life or try to set you up in any way as long as you stand for the truth many people fear in the modern age that man i stand for the truth now i'm going to get spiritually targeted now they're going to send handlers my way they're going to send agents my way posing as friends and girlfriends and boyfriends trying to get the best of me and trying to demoralize me not knowing that those people are digging themselves in their own hole and they're going to ones they're going to be the ones that are end up returning that spiritual attack on, on their own self because you stood for the truth al haq will always protect you and honor you and love you and cherish you as long as you stand for the truth and not falsehoods and that and al haq is you stand for the truth because you are the physical manifestation of the divine experiencing this reality trying to understand itself so stand for the truth and i always stood for the truth even when others turned against me whether it be family or friends and ultimately the most high allah the grand architect whatever was taken from me was given back to me times 100 and uh, there's so many examples that i can give you my brother and i can assure you as long as we stand for al haq the truth you shall never fear anything in your life and everything shall be given to you. I will kill the trustee, one who has matters entrusted to him. Yeah, so be a man of your word. When a brother comes to you and asks for a shoulder to cry on and shares his personal problems with you, he's telling you, hey, Sal, this is between me and you. I don't want you to go sharing this with anybody. So be the one who's a trustee. Because, you know, you are a manifestation of al here in this life. And there's somebody that can cry, come and cry to you and tell you their problems because they know that you will safeguard their, uh, their knowledge and their love and you will keep that between them only. So we have that not only in initiatic system with these different spiritual paths and even with people who are not affiliated with anything, just your normal human beings. You have that, you know, we're here to build our love and relationships with one another and our memories that we share. We're not here to do anything else or what the world might tell you to do. And, you know, we have that concept of those who are in service to others that uh, I will keep your confidence within my own heart and with my own grasp. I am your brother. You can come speak to me anytime. And what, what we say is between us and us only. So we must be, it's like in the quiet sometimes in our room, when we're just sitting quietly and crying out to God for help and asking God for help, what we say is between us and God only. We don't share that with anybody. Same with when you have a brother next to you, you're a representation of Ava Kiel. You can share each other's heartbreaks and successes and happiness and failures and know that you will keep that between us because we're helping each other. Uh, I'll call. Chloe and Al Mateen, the strong, the firm. Strength indicates perfect power, while firmness indicates intensification of strength. Yeah, so that's telling you that Al Kami Al Mateen is telling us that there will be times in your life where you get challenged, but that doesn't mean you just hang your gloves up and run away when the challenge comes. There will be good times and bad times, all there to test you to who you're meant to be and who you're meant to become. So strength firm. Stand firm with your strength, knowledge, and your power, knowing that you have to stand up for what's right. So you have the aspect of Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, where, you know, he was all about love and healing and helping humanity. But when he saw those that were targeting humanity, the money changers in the temple, he did not hesitate to go in there and flip their table and whip them. Same thing with Musa, Moses. When he saw the slaves being abused, he didn't hesitate, even though it took a lot out of him emotionally and mentally, but he did not hesitate to go and protect his people and do what he needed to do. Same thing with the prophet Muhammad. He was a warrior monk. He had to pick up his sword when he needed to, and then he picked up his heart of love and the book of knowledge when he needed to. So again, it's the balance. We're an exemplification of the Al-Kawi al Matin. And when we see injustice, we must not look the other way and stand firm in our truth and power and fight against it. It's just like when we, we always say, if you see a brother in trouble, do not hesitate to help him. Yeah, just run and go help him and save him, you know, even if it's your own life. Al Wali, the patron, lover, and protector. Yep. So Al Wali, my brother, is 
to be a lover and protectant, protector of your brother, of your family, of your children, of your community. It's telling us that we are a representation of the Awali. We are here to guide each other and love each other and help each other. And we must be the lovers and the protectors. Again, it, it complements al Kami and al Mateen that love your love all humanity, love those all around you, help all those around you. But when it comes time to pick up a sword against the wicked and the evil, then do not hesitate to do that too. So the lover and the protector, lover and a fighter, you must find the balance in between. Because if you're just a lover, then you suffer for that too. If you're just a fighter, you also suffer for that. So you got to find the balance in between and hone yourselves, take self-defense classes. If you do not know how to protect yourself and your family, learn how to protect yourself and be a man of good nature. That also reminds me of the story of the Templars and the Sufis. Exactly. You know, they, they were there. They were lovers and protectors. They were there to protect all faiths. And a lot of people, you know, Brother Bashir, they misinterpret the Templars. They have a lot of these uh, different Templar groups on Facebook, and they have this memes of the Templar with uh, with like a sword, and it says Deuce Volk, and it's like uh, talking about Muslims and stuff. They loved everybody. It was about loving and protecting all humanity. And unfortunately, we have those that are ignorant, that use and take others' name in vain, thinking that it's helping their cause. But, you know, the Grand Architect will hold you accountable for that. So you know your history. Know what was taught to you and what know what was kept from you. That's why it tells you to find knowledge everywhere. Coming to Prophet Muhammad is another example. Exactly. And then um, just recently when they were attacking the uh, churches um, in France, uh, a group of young Muslim boys stood in front of the church protecting the building and yeah, uh, protecting the parishioners. Uh, they were to stand outside. They go like, "This is this is this is our faith. We we are protectors. We're not we're not here to you know uh, to burn the church or kill any of the parishioners." He said, "We're here to protect you." And yeah. it's and it's the same that you know we that it is called. It's not against those who are against. And that's where a lot of misinterpretation has comes in uh, with this Western society, and that people you know use that as a weapon. And we always heard that in Western society, religion has been used as a weapon and it continues with being used today as a weapon. Indeed, my brother. And that's what I tell people is that no one is condemning to anybody to help. Everybody's teaching everybody the same thing. Just live and let live and be the best that you can be. It's like, um, you know, you see with the story of Saladin too. Saladin and Richard the Lionheart were brothers, were esoteric brothers of the same initiatic system. And they protected each other and they helped each other when they could. And they defended each other's faiths. When Saladin allowed the Christians safe passage in and out of Jerusalem with the Holy Sepulchre, even the keys that has been held by a Muslim family, because the covenant of the Prophet Muhammad teaches us to love and respect Jews and Christians as if they were our own. And if you marry them, don't force them to convert, protect their places of worship, their traditions, their values. Because we're all men and women and children of God. No one is above you or beneath you. We're all on the level, my brother. And that's what it's about. And unfortunately, this society here tells us that, oh, he's a, he's a Muslim or he's this or he's that. Or, you know, you got to fear him. Those are the agents of chaos, my brother, because they don't want us to come together. We're more stronger when we come together and they know it. That's why we must be the ones who are the light bearers for the sake of the grand architect. Al-Hamid, the praise, one who is praised and extolled. Yeah, so Al-Hamid is you also complimenting these different names that come before us, is that when you are praised for your goodwill and actions, and I, I always say that you don't praise me, always praise God, because we're all conduits being used for God's work. You know, the one great big work, a lot of these people say. So we're all part of that one big puzzle, so the one who's on top of all of it, he's the one that should be praised. And we're extensions of that Al-Hamid who are helping each other in this life by helping each other and guiding each other, standing up for each other when it needs to be done. 
Next one is Al Mushi, the knower of each separate thing. The one who knows yet when knowledge is linked to objects known insofar as it enumerates the object, count them, and so comprehends them it is called reckoning. Yes, so Al Mushi is telling you to learn each knowledge that's out there, but know what's good knowledge and what's moderate knowledge and what's dangerous knowledge. So that's telling you to find the balance in those qualities within yourself and what you're learning with others around you. So you could have these aspects of, you know, certain types of knowledge that's out there. You can apply that to your lives, but as long as you're not using it to harm yourself or others, as long as you're doing it for the sake of knowledge, then there's a fine line that you can walk for yourself and for your family. Because Al-Mushi, the knower of each separate thing, it's like how a mason is supposed to be able to take light from each path and each level of understanding that there is. You must be the one that's able to do it in your own way as well. And to know what's right, what's wrong, where do I find the balance and what do I just not say and what do I say in order to maintain the harmony. Al Mupti and Al Mu'id, the beginner, the restorer, the one who bestows existence, but when this origination is not preceded by something like it, it is called the beginning. And when it is preceded by something like it, it is called a restoration. Of course. So Al Mubdi and Al Mu'id, the beginner and the restorer, is that any time it's like uh, the different cycles of existence humanity's been in, and how there might have been civilizations before us the human civilizations that might have been more advanced than us emotionally, physically, spiritually, technologically, we don't know that. And we see that <clears throat> the creator of the universe, Allah, the grand architect, and all, after any, any time there was order out of chaos, there was always a new beginning. And I tell people, have faith. Your life in is an exemplification of the al mubi and al muid and there might be a bad time you're going through, but when that light at the end of the tunnel comes, then the beginner and the restorer that is also within your heart will know, what did you learn from that time when you were stuck in that hole? What did you learn from the bad times? What did you learn when you were struggling? So when you become the beginner and the restorer yourself with the blessings of the grand architect, then you do have the power to create heaven on earth. We all have that power if we choose to look within ourselves and know what the true reality is just like how he has always restored this earth after its destructions after how many times it, it got wiped out and cleansed and restored and then so on and so forth it's an order it's a system I'm and I'm <clears throat> the life giver the slayer object this life making it is called animation while the object is death doing it is called killing yes so Al Muhi and Al Mumit. He is the one that gives you life, and he's the one that will send Ezrael your way when it's time to take you to the next realm. And we're in Sufism, we're taught that the angel of death, or what they call Ezrael, visits you five times a day, equivalent to the five prayers. And Ezrael will look at you like, okay, he missed the Fajr prayer. Allah, can I take him? And Allah will say, no, it's not his time yet. It's uh, this prayer. Okay, he's missing all of the prayers. Like, can I take him now? And Allah will say, no, because he's the one that's the life giver and the slayer. So ultimately, we must be the one that need, need to get our act together. Because Al-Muhi and Al-Mumit is telling us that our, we will be given life. Tomorrow, I might have a new day of life that will be given to me by the life giver. Or it might get taken from me. I might have Azrael visit me in the middle of the night and take me. So I need to be better, know better, do better, and think better, Brother Bashir. And know that this life is, it's, it's a beautiful chess piece that we're in. And we're, we're in the middle in the black and white chess piece. To know that we're here to love one another, build relationships with one another, praise God together. And ultimately, we'll be helping ourselves. Because remember... The grand architect is self-sufficient. Allah does not need our prayers. Our destiny is pre-written for what we're meant to experience here with this current lifetime that we're in. But at the same time, you are also given free will. What are you going to choose to do with the time that's been given to you? Are you going to keep putting things off till the next day of not praying and not forgiving yourself and others and not getting close to God? Or are you going to do it when it's too late? Because when it's too late, then you have to pay the price for what you did. 
but as telling us to find that balance between ourselves with life and death and death and rebirth, just like how all of these different systems are teaching us in their own way. Al Hai, the living, is both agent and perceiver, so much so that one who does not act or perceive at all is dead. Sure. So that complements Al Muhi and Al Mumid. So both the agent and perceiver. So what is that telling you? Is that Allah, the grand architect of the universe, is the agent of creation. You're the perceiver of his creation, and you both are one and the same. How in the Holy Bible it tells you that the kingdom of heaven is within. And you know, Isa, peace be upon him, also says that the Father and I are one. Holy Quran. Surah 50 tells you that almighty God is closer to us than our jugular vein. What is all of that telling you? You and the creator to like, you know, make it simply in layman terms, you are the creator in the flesh experiencing this reality. And God is basically playing hide and seek with its own self through me, through you, through these different creations that are out there trying to understand its own self. And he has us in the palm of his hands, trying to understand the existence we are the, both the agent and perceiver. And all of these qualities that we listed of the 99 names, those are the qualities of the grand architect of the universe, Allah, the most high. And as the perceiver of the agent, we have that within ourselves as well. So we must always do what's right in order to reunite, just like how the Sufi is longing to reunite with his beloved for the agent and the perceiver to come together as one, because everything is one. And that's the ultimate reality. Everything else is an illusion. al Qayyum, the self-existing, exists without the need of support of others. Sure. So again, it's telling us to be self-sufficient. It, you know, it tells us from the earthly point of view, this is teaching us that be an honest human being. Find a way to learn and uh, earn an honest living in your life. Be self-sufficient. Take care of your family, take care of yourself, take care of each other without expecting anything from anybody else. Or you actually should be in a position where you're able to help others. So al Qayyum is telling you to basically be in a state of being self-sufficient. Because when you're self-sufficient, that's when you're at your most powerful. And you can handle your lifestyle in an independent way. Just like how al Qayyum, one of the qualities of Allah, is telling Allah, it does not require any help or prayers as the creator of the heavens and the earth. You, for your life, for this physical experience that you're in, that's your life, not in the grand scheme of things. You need to be self-sufficient for your life. And by doing so, you will be connecting with the Al-Hayu Al-Qayyum. That's another zikr that you can recite. Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, which is, tells you that, O oh, living self-existing one, and you will honor that quality within your own self as well, because you're an immortal soul. Like how you might have existed as a mineral, then you went to a plant, then you went to an animal. Now you exist as a man, then you'll go to an angel. Ultimately, you will go back to God. That's why when somebody dies in Islam, they say that to Allah we belong and to him we shall return. What's in between? Nothing. You might come back as something else, but ultimately you're destined to go back to where you came from, the self-existing one. That is that is you. Awaji, the resourceful, one who lacks nothing. Yeah, uh, in addition to Al-Qayyum, this is a complementary to that with Al-Wajid. It tells you that he's the one who lacks nothing. Everything is provided for him. And uh, there's a Sufi saint from Pakistan named Baba Bulesha. And they asked Baba Bullish Shah, you live in such poverty and yet you lack nothing. How is that so? He said, I lack nothing because the one who's the provider gives me everything. I get to see the beauty of the sun, the stars, the moon. I get to see the beauty of humanity. I get to see the beauty of myself and others, my disciples, uh, you know, the resources that are provided to me every day. Even though I might be living a humble life, of the fana, of annihilating of the self, to let go of this world, but yet everything is provided for me, no matter who or what stands against me. And like how all these other initiatic systems are teaching you, is that when you put your faith in God, there's nobody that can do anything to you. You will always be loved, protected for, and cared for, 
even when you think you when you're alone you're really not so that's what it's telling you that the resourceful one is always by your side uh al mujid the uh, al mujid actually the magnificent knower means the same as the knowing one sure so al majid the magnificent so it's basically telling you to be a knower to know thyself is to know thy lord and how in sufism it tells you that i tried to find god but only found myself i tried to find myself and only found god and there's a beautiful story in sufism where the sufi is knocking on the door of god how you have that concept in different initiatic systems as well where you have to knock and then you shall be received in whatever you're trying to do so in this initiatic system of sufism they tell you that the sufi knocked on the door of god and allah asked who is it and he said he's me it's me and uh the first time he knocked it, it, allah didn't open the door i said no i'm not going to open the door for you second time the sufi knocked and allah asked who is it he said it's me so second time again he was refused and of course, on the third time, because, you know, everything happens in threes and no matter what initiatic system you look at. So he, he knocked on the door the third time and <laughs> and Allah said, who is it? And he said, it's you. And he said, OK, you open the door. He said, OK, come on in, because it was you, me, it's it's all one. So Allah was telling him, who, who is this? Who's at the door? And he kept saying it was me thinking he was separate from the creator. And the door was not open unless he realized that when he, when he knocked on the door and Allah said, who is it? He said, it's you. And he opened the door. He said, all right, come on in. So know that you and the creator are one. You're here to experience this reality together. And know that nothing is separate. Everything is one. Once you realize that, then you start to look at the world in a whole way that you can never imagine before. I will heed the unique one who can neither be divided or duplicated. Sure. So look, we're all unique in our own way. Brother Bashir has his own unique story, successes, failures, and heartbreaks. I have my own talents, abilities, failures, heartbreaks, my own stuff that I need to work on. I'm not a perfect being. I still have issues that I need to work on in order to work my graces back into the most high. And, uh, al wahid is that we're all unique we all have i have our own unique blueprint we were all here with our own separate purpose and the world is a tapestry of different colors and patterns and that should be celebrated by just leaders and just beings if we were all the same then how's that helping you in your growth you have a lot of these neighborhoods in america where if they, if anybody's not the same race they'll try to run away and go to a place where everybody matches who they are and they're thinking knowing and understanding how are you going to grow like that when you're going to be in a neighborhood supposedly it's all clean and crime free but good and bad is everywhere i've seen some of the best people come out some of the worst neighborhoods and some of the worst people come out some of the best neighborhoods it doesn't matter where you live you must be in a place where all humanity is celebrated not just what matches your worldview because it's all one world no matter what zip code you try to escape to even though you might work in a diverse neighborhood doesn't mean you escape the reality of humanity because we're all unique in our own way. That's what I tell people is honor that al wahid within yourself. Know what's right and wrong and know that you must stand up for what's right. Don't try to escape something which you know is inevitable. al Samad, the eternal one to whom one turns in need and the one who is intended in our desires for ultimate dominion uh, culminates in him sure so the aspect of the eternal soul brother bashir is that you must when when we are in need like if it's always a good time all the time who's going to pray to god and ultimately by praying to god you're helping yourself because god does not require prayers it's you praying for yourself so the thing is that it's our desires and we need to circumscribe our desires and find that balance within ourselves so we can get honor that quality and activate that quality of the al samad in us in our heart and in our soul al-qadir al-maktub 
Muktagdir, the more powerful, the all determiner, one who possesses the power. Sure. So Al Qadir Al Muktadir is telling us is that the quality of Allah, which is the one who possesses the power, is you also have the power to determine your own life as well. The concept of free will, what the initiatic systems teach you, is that the concept of free will and the concept of power is what you choose to do with your life will ultimately give power to you. So if I choose to go out and help the homeless, I'm giving more power to myself. How they probably people say more power to you. So that means the Al-Qadir Al-Muqtadir is you choose to work at a better place. You choose to do something better for your family, take them in a better home. You have a better way of providing them a better living. Everything works out accordingly. So you have to be the one who takes the power in charge because God cannot help you unless you help yourself. And that's it in everything, even in the Holy Quran, it says man can only have what he strives for. So you must be the one who takes the power in your own hands. You can pray to God all you want, but if you choose not to take any action, then God's not going to help you. You help yourself and you help God. Because remember, at one of the names, the agent and the perceiver are the same being. So we must be the one that needs to take the charge when we need to. Al Mukadim and Al Mukahir, the promoter, the postponer, one who brings clothes and pushes away, and whomever he brings clothes, he promotes, while those whom he pushes away banishes. Sure. So this is the concept of, you know, Almighty God with the story of the Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani that I shared, that he turns sinners into saints, saints, saints into sinners, because you have the concept of the white lodge and the black lodge of what a lot of people have the you know perception of the black tile and the white tile. So today we're on the white tile. He's promoting us. We're doing great things. Tomorrow we might be in the black tile and he might postpone us and disregard us because there might be some lessons that we haven't learned yet. So it's very important that we find that balance and know how to be humble, how to be forgiving, how to be understanding and how to be knowing in all of these different things because he's the one that can give you everything in one day and the next morning you take up you're nothing so we're, we're beggars in this life like how the sufi he might be rich but he's sitting outside of the masjid like a beggar because he knows this reality what are you going to take with you your titles your degrees your cars your homes you're going to come out of this world the same way you're going to go leave from this world the same way you came out of your mother naked and empty-handed except the experiences and the love, and the boundaries you built with one another. That's the main thing. Al-Awal and Al-Akir, the first, the last. First is first with respect to something, and what is last is so with respect to something, and, the, and they are the opposites. Sure. So that complements uh, you know, the concept of uh, being opposites. So a lot of people say, what is God and the devil, right? And they say, okay, the, if you look at the Yazidi story and all that, those beings are allowed dominion over this realm with the will of God, because everything happens with God's permission. So including the good, have the good, evil, madness, genius, ingenious, all those aspects of balance here are happening with the permission of the most high. So he is the first and the last, the yin and the yang, the black and white the opposites and everything happens with his permission we must find that balance within ourselves is are you wanting to choose a reality of heaven for yourself or will you create a reality of hell for yourself that choice is given up to you as the agent and perceiver in the flesh and that's what it's telling you is that you are the creator of your own reality what a lot of these spiritual schools also try to well, implement in their teachings as well and it is, it's also what we talked about before as well. Um, you know, he's also the Alpha and Omega. And the beginning yes. is first with him. And to him is the last return and destination. So we are returning back to him. So it's just basically what we were saying before, the first and the last. Sure. To that. Um, the Al-Zahir and Al-Batin, the manifest, the hidden. What is manifest can be evident to one thing and hidden from another. Sure, that's a perfect example I can give you is that we're all looking for God 
We're trying to find God in the masjid, in the churches, in the synagogues, in the temples. We're looking up at the sky and crying out to God for help. But where is God the whole time? He's, you're the agent and perceiver. He's in your heart. He's in a place where you least expect to look for him. And so you are God's greatest secret. And God is man's greatest secret. We're all in this together. And it says what is manifest can be evident to one thing and hidden from another. So when you're not at that level of adeptness and initiatic experience, you won't get it. Like how it says in these different holy books that it was those that were initiates who understood. And then they were outside those who were taught in parables. So it's the same. So the aspect of the hidden knowledge of the grand architect, Allah, is the ones who have unlocked their hearts. So ultimately, it all, my brother Bashir, it all leads back to the heart. When your heart is right and you're thinking, knowing, understanding, doing, and everything else, then all of the qualities of these names get invoked and manifested within you as well. What can be evident to you might not be evident to the next person. So that's what this uh, manifestation applies. Next one is Al Wali and Al Mutali, the ruler, the exalted one who plans affairs of creation and rules them. And the same as Al Ali. Yes, yes, that's right. So again, you know, we have it complements the previous names Al Wali, Al Mutali, the ruler, the exalted one who plans affairs. And basically, it tells you that you're the maker of your own reality. And you have to choose and plan your day accordingly. And if I get up and I say, okay, I need to find some balance in my life. I need to wake up early so I can pray, I can exercise, then I can go to work. When I get home, I can take care of all my chores for the house, help my family, help my kids. So when you plan your you know, rules and balance of life accordingly, then you're able to rule over them. Just like how you have day and night, the different seasons, Allah also plans accordingly, and he's also given you that goal power to plan your life and execute over your affairs accordingly as well as Al-Wali. Al-Bar, doer of good, beneficent one. Yep, this one is a very simple one. Be a doer of good, be a good human being. What were you sent here in this life to do? To get degrees, pay taxes, pay bills, and die? You were here to uh, ask what good did you do for yourself and others? That is the secret of life. There's nothing more. There's nothing less. It's not about what you earned and how you did it, why you did it. It's ultimately the hearts and lives that you were able to touch. That's Al-Bar. Al-Tawab, uh, the ever, ever relenting, makes reference to fulfilling the causes of repentance in his servant's time. And again, by making manifest to them some of his signs, conveying his counsel to them and disclosing his deterrence and warnings to them the sure warning to them so uh what what this is teaching us is that you know allah al tawab is all, always giving us heads up all of these holy books that tell humanity that if you don't get your ways together then the aspect of the conqueror appears in front of you and he will come and bring justice and balance to the realms even though what it might seem some people might not understand it but he, he always gives you good counsel through the different prophets that manifested to bring the message of God to humanity. And still, we don't listen. We're still falling astray in our ways. Even us right now as brothers in these different initiatic schools, we're always taught to like, you know, give good counsel to one another if we see one at error. So that's what it is, the ever relenting. That's who we are. We're helping each other because I know that if I don't give him good counsel, then what's the point of me being his brother and his friend? And true brothers and true friends give counsel to each other and not turn their backs on each other as, if it does not benefit them. Then that means they are not the true followers of the path. Because if Allah did that for you by sending these prophets and apostles to walk the earth to tell you how to live a good life and how to have a good code of conduct and all that you do understand and think, then why can't you do that for each other? So that's what al Tawab is teaching us, including you know, what is referenced in the teachings of a lot of these initiatic systems. Uh, al Maltakum, the Avenger, one who breaks the back of the recalicerians, uh, punishes criminals, and intensifies the punishment of the oppressor. Sure. So this basically is telling us is the one who stands against injustice. 
one who stands against evil and injustice, and how these different prophets that walk the earth, such as Isa, Jesus, Musa, Moses, Muhammad, peace be upon them all, that they were all warrior monks. They were there to show love and humanity to everybody, but when it came time to protect against the evil ones, they did not hesitate to do that as well. So with uh, what's teaching that about Allah is Allah has also punished civilizations and nations who had fallen astray from the path of God. Same thing with us in these different initiatic systems we're taught that you have to protect against yourself, against evil, your family, your communities, anyone that you see doing injustice, you must speak out against it and not be silent because the one who is silent is complicit. Yeah, you have all these people that said, oh, we're the silent majority and all that. You're complicit because if it took you enough energy to say that we're the silent majority, then you have enough energy to do something about it too, rather than just make a single statement and you know turn away thinking that you're protecting yourself from that. So it's telling us not to be cowards. It's telling you to you know put your money where your mouth is and be about it when it's time to be about it. Don't be a coward when it comes for your time for you and your family and anybody else that is being affected by any kind of injustice. Uh, next one is Al Afu, the Ephesor of sin, is the one who erases sins and overlooks acts of disobedience. Sure. So Al Afu is telling us to invoke that quality of love and forgiveness within ourselves, my brother. And how you have people that have fallouts and then they make up again and they like, oh, just let the past be the past. And that's the love of Allah that's been placed in our hearts. That if we do that as human beings, when we cry out to Allah for help, Allah, please forgive me for all of the sins and bad things that I did in my life. He also forgives you as well. So again, agent and perceiver, all one and the same, as above, so below. It's a reflection of the same experience. Next one is Al Ra'uf, the all pi the all pi uh, piety. Well, this is piety, and piety is an intensification of mercy. Yes, yes. So this is basically saying to be a, um, you know, a pious person, have mercy upon others. When you walk by somebody and you have the power to help them, don't turn your back on them, help them. Because you will be held accountable when, you know, the flashback movie plays in front of you and they will say, you remember that one time you walked in front of this person, you had the power to do something about it, but you kept walking. That's when you'll know that you should have done something about it. So have pity and mercy upon all of God's creation because they're a reflection of you. You're a reflection of them. And unfortunately, my brother, we're living in an industry and in a world where women are degraded in these different adult industries, music industries, entertainment industries. Uh, you're taught to hate one another. Men are taught to be jumping from one woman to another. Women are taught to be jump, taught to jump from one man to another. What is that getting any of us? And it, it tell, tells us to F people and get money and all that stuff. What is that any of that doing for us? Those are the agents of chaos trying to destroy humanity. We must be better than that. We must have mercy upon each creation. So when it's time for mercy to be shown to us, it shall be given to us times 10. <clears throat> Malik al -Mulk. The king of absolute sovereignty, one who carries out what he wills in this kingdom in the manner that he wills and as he wills it, bringing into being and destroying per, or perpetuating and annihilating. Uh, I just want to add a little bit more here um, from Al-Ghazari. He says, al mulk here means kingdom, and Al-Malik means the powerful one with perfect power. Yeah, that's right. That's absolutely right. So... Allah, the way that he has designed this system, Brother Bashir, everything happens with, that, with his will, not without it, whether it's the good things or the bad things, because again, we are in this inevitable balance. And he's the one that begins, brings creation and also perpetuates annihilation. So alpha and omega, black and white, heaven and earth, yin and yang. So all of that, he's the king of absolute sovereignty, just like how we are given sovereignty over our own lives. Do you want to create a beautiful life by having good habits, good actions, good thoughts, good love for everybody? Or do you want to be an agent of destruction? So again, as above, so below, agent and perceiver. 
Next one is Duljal Wal Ikram, the Lord of Majesty and Generosity, is the one um, from whom there is no majesty or perfection, but it that is his, nor is there generosity or noble gift, but that it flows from him. Sure. So this is basically telling us that, you know how we're taught that we're imperfect beings and we're working our way towards per perfection by through our good actions, good will, and good thoughts. That's what Dulal Jalal Walikram is teaching us, is that the Lord is generous and is majestic. And it's telling us that, you know, the aspect of being noble, being forgiving, being loving, and showing this aspect of generosity and perfection and love is how you exemplify that trait of the grand architect as, you know, the word becoming flesh yourself to help all those around you so we can get back to the source that we originate from ultimately in this short lifetime that we've been given. Uh, al muqsi the equitable, is he who demands justice for the wrong from the wrongdoer. Yeah, ex exactly. So the al muqsi is how, like I said, with the different prophets that found that balance between being a monk and a warrior, and also uh, the aspects of these different brotherhoods, my brother, that are teaching us is that when it's time to bring justice, you must be able to do so for yourself, for your country, for your world, for your fellow human beings, anybody that's being affected by injustice. You must invoke al muqsit and not look the other way, thinking that, oh, we're the silent majority or we're this and that by claiming to be good people. You're not good people if you choose to not stand up for justice when you, have, you know you have the power to do it, even if it's putting all of your titles and reputation on the line. Because like we said, with the story of uh, Al-Haq, with the name that was invoked, with the story of Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani and the thieves, if you stand up for the truth, you will be blessed beyond your imaginations. Because the grand architect is the best of all planners. How we say Allah is the best of all planners. Always stand for the truth and it shall be given back to you. Uh, Al-Jami uh, is the uniter. Uh, the, is the one who combines similar things, dissimilar things, and opposites. Sure. So I say that anything that causes disunity, my brother, is ungodly. And in this world, we're taught that, okay, every race needs their own separate church. Uh, everybody needs their own separate place of worship. Everyone is different. They live in different neighborhoods. They don't want to interact with each other. They get scared when a person of a different race moves into their neighborhood. So how can we as a people get to that aspect of unity consciousness if we can't even respect each other as human beings? So this is telling us that no matter what race or religion that there is, there's truth being taught everywhere. What is all of that is teaching you? It's a code of conduct. Every single faith and reality that I covered, even in my videos, similarity of Freemasonry with this, with that, with this, with that, it's all teaching you the same exact thing be better, know better, think better, self-improvement, the aspect of al-jami, the uniter, is invoke that quality of the grand architect here. Because the grand architect of the universe, Allah, he's the creation of all things. He's not going to look down lesser upon anybody because they might live in a different zip code than you. That's you. That's the human. You're, you're the problem. You got to fix yourself. Everything is one. Everything is love. Everything is light. But it's you. You need to look yourself in the mirror and not blame anybody else or blame religion or blame God. You got to be the one that is exemplifying the al Jami and the uniter and be the exemplification of uniting humanity through your own specific actions and whatever you're trying to do. If we all come together, I mean, uh, whatever I did, I, I did it through my old iPhone 6. I wrote my book. I published a book. I made over 150 presentations. Everything I did from this old iPhone 6 with a pair of $10 headphones. Why? Because I had the intention of invoking al Jami, the uniter, to give that message out to humanity. Even those people who might have misunderstood me or hated me. But I know that this life is too short. And I'm not here to waste time or hurt anybody. I'm going to tell you this truth straight up. However you perceive it is up to you. But I will do my job letting you know what's reality and what's not reality because this life is too short and we must be able to unite humanity, not destroy it or divide it. 
and that what the what we uh, the covenant of prophet Muhammad have said too in inside the in the covenant. The covenant was uniting the the, the Abrahamic religions in Medina. The constitution of Medina was the first time that we ever seen in history uh, by Prophet Muhammad, peace be among him, freedom of religion. It didn't came from the Western world. It came from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be among him. Sure, that's why the light is always in the East. Uh, Al Ghani and Al Bugni, the rich, the unricher, one who has no connection with another, least be in need of the one who made him rich. Yes. So the rich and the enricher of Al Ghani and Al Bugni is basically telling you is that uh, is basically we're all in this balance, brother. We're helping each other, the rich and the enricher, the perceiver and the agent. So the enricher is the one, the grand architect who's enriching us as we become the rich. And that's, that's not like fiscal means or financial means. That's by the qualities of your heart. There's a lot of rich people that I know in this life that are very poor from the inside. Is money the source of your happiness? No. There's people killing themselves over these jobs that will replace them in a minute. Not knowing. Find that balance. You didn't just come here to work and die. Have a balance of healing yourself, knowing yourself, and understanding yourself. And know that even you go to these niche, rich neighborhoods and uh, rich people, some of their homes are suffering. There's an element of darkness around there because that money is cursed. They have drug problems, emotional problems, mental problems in themselves and their families. So is money really what's going to help you? So the rich and the enricher is telling you is that it's you. It's your soul. It's your uh, inner connection. It's your heart that if you want to get blessings from the enricher, you must make those things rich. And that's when you will find that divinity within you as well. And that's what happened with, uh, uh, with King Solomon. Uh, King Solomon was sad at the, uh, at, in, um, in his writings, especially in, in, the, in the Holy Bible. If you read the book of Ecclesiastes, mm. he's crying out saying that, like, I only want you because I have all the money in the world. I have all the wisdom in the world. But he feels empty <clears throat> because all he wanted is Allah. Of course. And he says that, that those who increase knowledge increase sorrow because this world is an illusion. Allah is the only reality. Everything else is an illusion. Almani, the protector, one who encounters the causes of destruction and diminishment in religious and temporal affairs by creating causes intended for protection. Yes, yes. So the protector, and we realize Almani is why do these different religions and brotherhoods and initiatic systems exist? They're all teaching you the same exact thing. So that basically it's a code of conduct because if we don't have rules, we're, we become animals. So we need rules. We need a way of life and a system to keep us in line. So these different religions are there. It's all part of the same because being a Muslim means one who submits to God. That could be anybody, as long as you submit to a higher power, knowing that there's something out there, just like how a Mason submits to the grand architect, knowing that there's a divine higher power guiding our actions in this life. So it's the same thing. So we have these different societies and uh, brotherhoods that come for their cause to protect humanity with the will of Almani, the protector, who manifests all of these things within us. You have those that join different aspects of law enforcement or the military or whatever have you because they want to protect their people and they want to do whatever they want to do. So Almani is manifested within you. You become Almani, the protector of yourself, your home, your family, and have a state of affairs where you live a good conduct and a good, clean life so you can manifest that quality within you. Aldar Anafi, the punisher, he who benefits one from whom comes forth good and evil, benefit and harm, all of which is to be referred to God on high. So again, see, this is telling you the truth. Aldar al-Nafi, the punisher and he who benefits. So in a lot of the Sufi esoteric teachings, they will tell you that the devil is basically the wrath, the, the side of God, which is the wrath of God, the punishment, and the one where you will be punished for you know, the actions that you've taken in this life. What's heaven and hell? What's God and the devil if Allah is the only reality? 
and everything else is an illusion. So that's what it's telling you. Do you want to stay here and create a reality of hell and be punished in the same reality after this life? Or do you want to stay here and live a good, clean life and do the better thing and face the aspect of benevolence? So it's your choice, your free will. It's either you could have the punisher who will deal with you or the one who benefits. Because even Iblis cannot do anything without Allah's permission. Same thing what they tell you in these different faiths. That ultimately, it all comes from the Most High. Nothing moves, not even an inch of grass moves without his permission or without his knowing and understanding of it. So that's what it's telling us is that this life is what you make it. And you get out of it what you put into it. So you can't blame anybody. You can't blame God. You can't blame the devil. It's you. You are the manifestation, right? As the agent and perceiver. So from the esoteric point of view, it's you. Look yourself in the mirror and decide what kind of life you want to live. Of goodness and benevolence and understanding and order. Or do you want chaos and disorder? It's up to you. Here, here's a common one from Freemasonry. Al Noor, the <laughs> light. <laughs> visible one by whom everything is made visible for what is visible in itself and makes other things visible is called light. <laughs> yes. So in Surah Al Nur in the Holy Quran, it says, Allah brings from darkness to light whom he wills, and whom he does not, he keeps them in darkness. So again, you have almost 8 billion people, and it's only what, 5 or 6 million that are Freemasons. So just like how it says in Mark 4.11, few will get it, many of you won't. The, the Sufis of the bench, few of you will get it, many will won't. A lot of Moses' inner circle of the Egyptian initiatic schools, few will get it, many of you won't. So that's what it's saying, is that in order to be a manifestation of that light here on this world, because he's the one who, who, who keeps those ignorant, there are those that are ignorant, Brother Bashir. You can place all of the books and knowledge and documentation, sources, whatever have you, put everything in front of them. They just won't get it because they're not meant to. They're just meant to wander in, in the darkness or wander in the West like a dog chasing its own tail, not trying to find their way back to the East of hidden knowledge and light. They're just not meant to understand. So they will be the architects of their own destruction. Those that will get it, they're here to create heaven on earth. So that's what this is telling us, is that if you are the one that gets chosen to understand, like you and I have the privilege of understanding the oneness of everything, then we invoke that quality of Allah, which is al-Nur within us. And we are to be the light of the world. Exactly. Al-Hadi, the guide. One who guides, another, for, another Masonic term. One who guides the elect among his servants to a knowledge of his essence so they might call upon it as a witness to things. Yes, so th this is this is a very beautiful, my brother, because in Sufism and, you know, the Islamic point of view, this is one who uh, dies without a guide. That means the shaitan, Iblis, was his guide. So he dies in darkness. It complements al-Nur, light. So in order to invoke the guide of the uh, Allah and grand architect within you, you need a teacher in this lifetime who will guide you. You have a lodge who will have their worshipful master, and you'll have a, a Sufi school, which will have a sheikh and his disciples, who will, who will be your guide, who will help you. And that's exactly what it is. You, you need somebody. We're, we didn't come just come here to be alone and die alone. We're here to teach others and learn from others as well in the process. That's what it is. And if you don't, then you die in darkness. al -Badi. The absolute cause, nothing similar to its known. Yes. So it's basically, it's telling you that everything is an illusion. Allah is the only reality. You take it how you, however you want to take it. You have this concept of when you go outside into space and you look at the world, the whole world is one, right? Allah had. And it tells you that when you come down from, from the space, everything is one, this one global harmonious body moving slowly, slowly in harmony with one another, with the sun, moon, stars, and the other planets. When you come down, that's when you see aspect of chaos, disharmony, borders, religions, ideologies. That's us. We're the problem. The creator gave us a beautiful world that's meant to be shared by everyone. The resources, the land, the water. Who's the problem? It's us. There are people at the top, billionaires who, who can, who 
might have that wealth for even a hundred lifetimes and it still will not run out of that money. Why do they need so much? Why there's so much greed, so much hatred, so much war? Again, we're choosing that aspect of Aldar al Nafi, the punisher. We're choosing to punish ourselves. Or do we want to be the one who basically benefits ourselves? So Al Badi is benefiting that situation right there. You are the maker of your reality. If let's say a thousand people, like you have neighborhoods here in Philadelphia that are being torn apart by gun violence. Let's say a thousand of them just come out right now. And I said, enough is enough. Whoever we see that's messing with women, children, uh, selling drugs in our neighborhood, we're gonna take you down with the help of our law enforcement officials. Don't you think those places will change overnight if the people come out and collectively get their act together? So that's it, Al Badi. Oh, 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 the everlasting is the existence whose existence is necessary in itself. Sure. So we're the immortal soul, the immortality of the soul, as the different schools teach us. And also al-Baqi, Allah. Allah is the beginning. Allah is the end. And we come from Allah. So we are also the beginning and also the end. There's nothing else about it. You will always exist such as you have the concept of the third matrix movie where Neo supposedly died. And, but when you see him being carried off by the machines, he gets transformed into a ball of energy. And now we have matrix four coming out where he comes back to life. So what, what, what are all of these movies and books and video games teaching you, including these different spiritual and esoteric teachings? They tell you the truth. It's in front of you. It's your fault if you choose not to perceive it because that's on you. That's not on them. So existence, everything is in itself is one harmonious body. Everything is one. If you choose not to understand that, then it's you. It's no one else you can put your blame on. al Kharif, the inheritor, one to whom possesses return after the possessors disappear, and that is God. Sure. So we are the inheritors of the life given to us and we will be the inheritors of the life that comes after. So is almighty God with whatever has been given to us. So we must be better, my brother. We must stand up against bigotry, ignorance, whether it exists in Freemasonry or in other places and stand up for what's right at all times. We must be better. We must better, know better, think better and do better. And that's ultimately we will be the inheritors of the reality we create. Al Rashid, the right and guidance, <clears throat> one whose plans are ordered to their goals according to approved ways of acting without any indication of an advisor or the directions of a director or the guidance of a guide. Sure. So, in order to find your way back home, you must look within your heart, right? As the agent and perceiver, where do you find God? You're going to go find God in a masjid or a church or a synagogue. God is in your heart the whole time. Get right with yourself and you will become right in guidance. It doesn't matter what titles or degrees or honors are given to you in this life. There are those that might go to church every Sunday or pray five times a day or have honorary titles or numbers bestowed next to their name, but some of them are not good people. Some of them are wicked people. They're disgusting in their behaviors and how they treat themselves and others. Then there are those that might have the same titles and they might be great people that do great things. So it's telling us that you want to find guidance, you want to be the al-Rashid and invoke that quality of the grand architect of the universe, find it within your own self. Don't let the titles and the approval of this world tell you what it means to be a good person. And uh, we are at our last name. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> the last name is al Sabur, the patient, one who does not let haste move him to carry out an action before its time but rather decides matters according to definite plan and brings them about in de delineated ways. Sure. So it's telling us like when we join masonry or join any initiatic path, they tell you that you're not going to become a master in three months or in one day. Any place where you become a master mason in three months, like, yo, that's, that's not how it should be. It's, it, it's a lifetime of experience. It's a lifetime of experience. And it should be every day till the day that you die, you're going to be learning something new and realizing something new and understanding something new about life and the nature around you. So this is telling you that if, even with me, I was in a situation where I had a lot of 
financial issues, my weight and my health were out of control. And then I realized, what kind of reality am I creating for myself? Then I sat down and I stared myself in the mirror and I said, no, I'm going to, what Al Sabur teaches me, the patient, one who does not let haste move him, to carry out on action before it's time, but rather decides according to definite plan. You sit down and you make a game plan for yourself and realize, okay, these are the things in my life I need to straighten out and you do it. And again, it, reference to, it references to God only helps those who help themselves. Help yourself and the divine will guide you. If you're just going to sit and expect the sky to rip open and something to drop on your lap, that's not how it's going to work. And same thing with masonry. You get out what you put into it. Holy Quran, man can only have what he strives for. So you are the maker of your own reality with the blessing of God. You want heaven, you want, the, you want hell and the devil, you'll get that. You want heaven and God, you can get that also. Depends on which line you're choosing to walk. That's your free will. Uh, that was the uh, last one. And, uh, you know, patience also is that we always need to be, we also have to teach ourselves patience anyway. Um, being yes, patient with everything we do. Um, that's a, it, it's a, it's a trait that we must, all of us needs to be, um, working on instead of rushing, uh, going fast pace, we need to slow down and take our time and to think exactly. about our actions at times, because we're, uh, sometimes we just make that fast decision and not realizing the consequences. Exactly. And we, we must realize my brother, it's not to act out in haste, anger, or regret. Because a majority of those decisions, when you make it in anger, you end up regretting it. So when I was losing weight, for example, it took me one year, a month, a whole year of consistency of eating right, exercising to bring my waist down from 44, where I was suffering with obesity, down to at least like 33. So I couldn't have done that in one day or one week or one month or six months. It took me a year plus, 12 to 14 months. So when we're ready to make our intention to do something and take it day by day, everything works out because your intention is the right place. When you choose to help yourself, then God will help you. And all, you know, in, um, in conclusion of this presentation, I would like for you to add your thoughts to what these 99 names are and what they mean to you. And also, you know, what I would say is that we need to do what's right always. God is there, religion is there, Freemasonry is there, these different spiritual paths are there. But if we're not choosing to create heaven on earth, then all of this stuff is there, it's going to waste. We need to be better. Stand up against injustice, bigotry, prejudice. Be who you say you are. Don't just say, okay, I'm 33 or I'm a past master or I'm this and I'm that. And then you go online and you be a bigot. Then what's the point of you doing that? God's going to hold you accountable for that. Be one who respects everybody with their race, religion, and background. Be the uniter. Be the lover. Be the protector. All of these qualities we figure, you know, pointed out, it's all in front of you. And you are the one whether you will create a good reality or bad reality for yourself. So I'll let Brother Bashir Mark uh, give the concluding thoughts on his end as well. Uh, thank you. Um, as a brother of the, the fraternity as well, um, and being a past master, I always have to say that I always have guided people to make sure that, they, that we teach them the right things. And we always have to make sure that we do the right things, and especially, uh, especially with those who are different than us. Um, yeah. The Brotherhood has, you know, um, as you know, um, Pennsylvania Grand. You you went you you saw the you attended the Grand Lodge, and that you saw what the uh, what the Grand Master have said about regarding to differences. Yes. He brought in the the uh, Prince Hall Grand Master of Pennsylvania yeah. into the meeting, and that's the most important thing is to bring unity. Sure. Why do we have to have separate? lodges we should be one lodge one lodge together be, regardless of our differences put one lodge together because we are nothing but brothers and that's something that we need to do especially something to our also to our brothers who are uh, in other cultures too who have masonry long before england did but because of bigotry uh politics we're not together and of course that's something that we need to put aside 
And we actually had to start saying, you know what, we are brothers together and we have to start acting like brothers. And, you know, uh, you, you have done so many videos and, uh, you know, uh, about the East, uh, because that's where it originated from. And it's, it's time for us to give them the, its due. Um, but it's also, uh, you know, I, I was just thinking that as a, as a brother, as a former, you also, as a former past manager, you also, you also want to raise leaders too, to become the new light, to lead the lodge, to lead the brothers into becoming better brothers. Hmm. Because what we need now is become better brothers. We're not being better brothers. We're being, you know, we're, we're still having that hatred towards some things and that we shouldn't be. And we should be better brothers to one another, regardless of our backgrounds, regardless of uh, or whoever we are. We need to be better, and especially in our fraternity, which mm -hmm. we were saying that, you know, only 5 million out of billions of people in this world. Mm -hmm. And we need to be better. We're not being better at what we do. And you, you, you brought that up too, because we're not doing better with the younger generation. We have, that's a bigger problem because how we could lead without the younger people. And that's, uh, you know, that's something that, you know, you brought up in your last post uh, that was brought up by an NPR article <laughs> and who was not a Mason who wrote that. So we can't <laughs> Mason get their act together. So, you know, this is all the characters that we, that we described today. It's, it's, it's within us. Mm -hmm. We are be, and what we said in the beginning, we are God-like. And yeah. we have though, if we are God-like, that means we have all the qualities of God, except for, you know, except for, you know, him being the over the so everlasting, the Alpha and Omega, the overall, the superior. But we are to be like him in order and character. He created yeah. and he created us in the image and the likeness of him. And that's what and that's what we we all believe. And that's what we need to continue to follow. Absolutely. I am in 100% agreement with you. And to those that are watching us, just to also add that what we're teaching here is because we love everybody. And it's for the sake of everybody's benefit. And we're not here to represent any Grand Lodge statements or opinions. It's us as free men under free speech doing what we do because we love our fraternity. We love humanity. We love these different fates out there. And we want all of us to come together put all of the pettiness and ego aside and come together. This life is too short. Always do the right thing. And I'm grateful for Brother Bashir and Mark, who always affords me this opportunity to get this message out there. So thank you all again. And I hope you were able to take something away from what we had to offer.